it's the best weather you can ask for in Central Arkansas, and it's fitting because the two best teams from Central Arkansas are colliding in the 6A State Softball Championship at Ferris Field on the University of Central Arkansas campus. Welcome into the 6A State title game. We've got Bryant taking on Cabot. Welcome into the broadcast booth. Bobby Swafford alongside Dorian Kraft and the two best teams from the 6A Central squaring off today. It's fitting to have these two playing for a state title. Bryant and Cabot have been the best two teams. A ton of power, a great pitching matchup. Nothing but the best to decide the state championship. Let's find out how these two teams got here. Let's start with the visiting team first, the Bryant Lady Hornets. And maybe they're a surprise if you want to call it that first. They got a buy in the opening round of the state tournament, but that's when the path to Conway started. They eked by Springdale Harbor by the score of 3-2, to two, but this is the one you have to pay attention to. They took down the defending state champion Bentonville Lady Tigers 6-4 to four in the semifinals, and that sets up the matchup with the conference rival Cabot in the contest today. And of course, this team, it's all about their power numbers, and Abby Gentry, the South Dakota State commits and signee, of course, she stirs that drink. Senior catcher Abby Gentry sets the pace for the Bryant Hornets at the top of the line of a 600 batting average. She's on base seven Seven out of 10 times, 14 home runs, 35 RBI. This is a team, Bobby, that has 45 home runs as a squad. Anytime you're talking about those kind of power numbers, that's really dangerous for opposing pitchers. Uh, you mentioned that the home run totals for the team, but the production up and down that lineup looks like they've got five players with 20 or more RBIs. It's not just her at the top of the lineup that can do the damage. And that is really what's propelled Bryant to this point, that win over Bentonville, a statement victory. But when you're getting production from one to nine and turning that lineup over, getting your hitters in, up with RBI opportunities. That's when your offense is clicking on all cylinders. So Bryant 22 and 7 on the season, 10 and 2 in conference play. Those two losses, of course, were to Cabot, but they got wins against Benton and Bentonville, who most people think were the two best teams in the state entering the state tournament. We'll have to find out if they can finish it off. How about the other side? This is the team who thought they were going to be here. Talking about the Cabot Lady Panthers, they won the conference, a perfect conference record at 12 and 0, 23 and 2 on the season, a first round bye, and then they went through Bentonville West with relative ease, 5 nothing, and then they squeaked it out another one against Rogers, one nothing, and that's why the Lady Panthers are back in the state championship game for the second consecutive year. It's really important for teams that have run through their conference to have those close games, though, as you get close to the championship game because it's important to learn how to win in tight ball games. Uh, Caleb Bernard is the, the big bat in the Lady Panthers lineup. You see the numbers there. Obviously a big-time player right in the middle of that order for the Lady Panthers. Uh, Caleb Bernard, the undisputed leader of this Lady Panthers team not only at the plate but in the circle as well. She's been dominant all season long. Yep, she can do it all but last year this is a team that thought they were in position to win a state championship. They took on Bentonville. It almost seemed like they were going blow for blow but some miscues led to some inopportune runs there for Bentonville and the Lady Tigers won it 3-1 to one, and the Lady Panthers know that they've had that one circled all since last year. Hey, we got to get back. We don't want this same feeling. We got to find a way to get the job done this time in the state title game. Bobby, I've lost in the state championship I know what that feels like and to have the opportunity to come back in the next year have another shot for it especially when you thought you should have won the year before Cabot is locked in they are ready to take on Brian in this game yep, Cabot's 23 and 2 on the season the only two losses this year to Benton and Green County Tech the two teams that were in or actually are in the 5A state championship game as we've got the national anthem being played here at Ferris Field there are two contests against Bryant this year, April the 4th, close contest, they lost it 6-4. to four. And then another close contest on April the 28th, 9-8. to eight. So even though they haven't beaten this Bryant team, they're not afraid of them. That's the reason why there's the adage, it's tough to beat a good team three times in the same season. And both of those prior games, Bobby, as you mentioned, they were close. I expect another close contest today. I mentioned the weather looks good. Let's <laughs> back that up with some graphics. 83 degrees, 5 miles an hour humidity, really not a factor unless you've been out running around since about 815. It's not <laughs> that hot today. It's a perfect scene. It's going to be a packed house, and we're expecting big things from both Cabot and Bryant in this contest. A lot of fun, a lot of fireworks, a lot of firepower, and there's a good crowd showing up, which is always great to see. Cabot and Bryant set to do battle as the starting lineups are being announced here at Ferris Field on the campus of the University of Central Arkansas. If you're just joining us, that's Dorian Kraft. I'm Bobby Swafford. I get you set for Bryant taking on Cabot. And I mentioned the two games this year that Bryant fell to Cabot, both relatively close contests. When you face a team so many times, two, three times in a year, is it hard to, to put those out of your mind, especially if you've lost both contests? Yes and no. 
you remember the things that you did wrong, especially in the close game. So you can go back and pick it apart play by play and say, hey, if we had done this different or that different, we probably would have come away with a victory. But on the other hand, you have a lot of information that's available to you because you're so familiar with your opponent. That works on both sides. So that's the same for Bryant as it is for Cabot. And so you are going in probably the most prepared of any game that you have in the entire season. Bryant and Cabot set to do battle in just a few seconds. We'll step aside real quick. 6A state championship first pitch is coming up as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. What is it you're looking for this time? The answer to a riddle. I'm so close to cracking the case. It's very Agatha Christie. This is just beginning. And then we can see it operate. And she has a surprise, of course. There it comes. $10,000? Are you serious? I am serious. Oh, you're kidding. No, I'm not. Oh. <laughs> your investment in this PBS station brings Antiques Roadshow into your home each week. Thanks for making it possible. Conway in the 6A State Softball Championship. Bryant taking on Cabot. First pitch coming up, and we're going to get a really good look at uh, Caleb Bernard, the pitcher for Cabot. And the numbers are through the roof this year. 16-2, and two, 173 strikeouts, and only 101 innings. An ERA that's about like my GPA was back <laughs> in the day, 1.17. She can get it done in the circle. Don't sell yourself short, <laughs> Bobby. Right-hander Kayla Bernard, her pitching in the circle has been stellar the entire season. Has a velocity that sits in the mid-60s, curve, drop, rise, and a change-up. Bernard coming off a complete game win over Rodgers, won nothing in that game. What was most impressive is Bernard sat down the last 18 batters, 15 of those via strikeout. It's always nice when you don't have to put your defense in play. Fifth striking out 15 of the final 18 will get the job done. Take a look at the starting lineup for Bryant. Uh, as they're going to get things going. And as you mentioned, Abby Gentry is going to lead things off. And that's who's going to get the, the, everything going for the Lady Hornets, followed up by Cadence Armstrong and Allie White. Those are going to be the batters one, two, and three coming up for the Lady Hornets. You, you take pitches. What, what, how, do you, how do you approach the, the top of the first of a, of a high-pressure game? Obviously, if it's, if it's down the pipe and you like it, you, you swing away. What's, what's your philosophy I here? was always a free swinger. I like to go after the first pitch. I would go hunting for something good, especially against a high-volume strikeout pitcher because oftentimes as a batter, the first ball that you're going to get is the best one you'll get of the entire sequence. Again, though, this goes back to how much these two teams know each other and the scouting report. And so you can bet that both Gentry and Bernard are coming in very prepared. These are each team's best players going at each other to start the game. We are ready for first pitch. Bernard steps in the circle. Abby Gentry in her 600 average in the box. First pitch is fouled away, and we are underway in the 6A title game. Gentry going hunting first pitch. I like the philosophy, the aggressiveness. Bernard coming with her best pitch. That's that rise ball that's going to come up and out of the zone. Good look at the Cabot crowd in the behind there. That one just misses one and one of course you always want to start fast as an offensive team but of course you don't want to fall behind hitters if you're a pitching staff as well so Bernard knows 173 strikeouts clearly trying to go to work early that went up out of the zone what Bernard is going to try to do against an aggressive Bryant lineup is she's going to try and make the Lady Hornets expand the zone, especially the first time through the lineup, really try to command the corners, go up in the zone, see what Bryant is willing to chase outside of the traditional strike zone. That one again fouled away. That one outer third. Nice location there from Bernard. Evens the count of two. Nice pitch there from Bernard. Curveball moving away. To hit that pitch as a hitter, you have to be very comfortable letting that ball get deep on the outer third of the plate and then hit it off your back hip. Gentry has some patience at the plate. She's drawn 24 walks this season. Here's your 2-2 pitch. That one right down the pipe. Strike three called. 
A beautiful pitch there from Bernard right down the center of the plate. She caught Gentry looking. Gentry was looking for something on the outside corner, got crossed up, and there was nothing she could do but watch. Yeah, definitely wasn't looking for that one. That would probably caught more plate than Bernard was really hoping to. That was a lot of meat on the plate on the bone there, but couldn't get the bat off her shoulder. First out of this first inning. Armstrong shows bunt. Cadence Armstrong, 435 average. You can tell she's a facilitator. Just eight RBIs this season, one extra base hit. She scored 19 runs. Typical numbers for a two-hole hitter. Two-hole hitter is going to have someone that has great barrel control, lots of speed at the plate. That one fouled away. You can kind of see the slap approach, and we'll go ahead and ask the question and get it out of the way <laughs> early. We've got a lot of people who may not watch a lot of high school softball or softball in general. What's the approach when she's taking steps towards the pitch as it's coming her way? So what Armstrong is trying to do is she's trying to shorten the distance between the plate and first base, especially on this turf field here at Ferris Field. What Armstrong is trying to do is drive the ball into the turf to create a high hop that allows her to get down to first base before the fielder can make the throw. Generally, you're going to see someone who has that approach has plenty of speed to burn <laughs> as well. That was not me. <laughs> One and two is the counts. Waved on a miss, a second consecutive strikeout to start this contest, and the Kayla Bernard is not disappointing. Bernard really sailing through the first two batters. Undisciplined approach there a little bit from Armstrong, a screwball that was moving away. That's a really smart pitch to throw against a lefty slapper because as they're moving out of the box, that ball is going to tail away on the outside portion of the plate. So the first two batters have been sat down on strikes, and that brings up the pitcher, Allie White. She sw swings through the first one up around the letters. Third tier rise ball. Rise balls, again, for, for people who don't watch a ton of softball, may be tuning in for the first time. There are three different tiers of rise balls that you'll hear me talk about today low, middle, and high. Bernard features the high rise. That one slapped to the left side, finds a hole. So the first hit of the contest goes for Allie White, hitting 506 on the season. So that average is going to take up just a touch and the first base runner of this contest for Bryant. It's a good swing from White on a ball that was really middle inner third of the plate. Almost a mistake there from Bernard. Nice job by White, though, getting hands quick to contact. It's going to bring up Peyton Stewart, the cleanup batter, 317 average. He has 22 RBIs on the season. Looks like we're going to get a courtesy runner for the pitcher. Of course, the pitcher and the catcher can have courtesy runners in high school softball in Arkansas. Just kind of the speed up the process of the game. Specs Easterwood, the courtesy runner there. We'll get into why she's called Specs in just a little <laughs> bit. It's not going to be your normal high school female name. <laughs> so runner at first, two outs for Bryant. Peyton Stewart steps into the box. That one catches a good part of the plate. And Bernard, again, works from ahead. That's the key for any pitcher, but especially one that's as dominant as Bernard. Getting ahead in the count really gives you so many more options as a pitcher about what you were able to sequence, and then you force the batter to hit your best pitch. That one well out of the zone. Evens up the count. Seven extra base hits this year for the Bryant third baseman. It's going to take one in the gap to give the Lady Hornets a chance to take the lead. That one fouled away over to the right side. Bernard up one and two. Good swing on a ball in the outer part of, of the plate. But again, as that ball is on the outer third, and this is the difference between hitters that are good and hitters that are excellent at the high school level, it's letting that ball get deep. And it's something that you really have to be comfortable with. Not a lot of hitters can do it, but both these teams feature really talented hitters. That one low and inside, as, as you might expect with someone who has a 16-2 record, as Bernard does control, not really a problem. Just 42 walks and over 100 innings of play. She's going to make you earn your way on base. That's one of the reasons why, though, you're seeing Bryant be so aggressive here early is that they know Bernard doesn't have a habit of issuing a lot of free passes. Got some balls coming in. Top of the first 6A state championship game 
A Kayla Bernard in the circle for Cabot. She's already punched out two, looking to clean up the side. There is a single in there, Allie White, singled with two outs. Courtesy runner over at first is that one fouled away. I'm gonna chase that one out of the zone. Finish that thought, the runner at first is Easterwood. There is no pitch count in high school softball, but you know, make her work. You know, obviously you want to get out there and make her throw as many pitches as possible. Maybe she makes a mistake and you can find the gap. You'll hear coaches talk a lot about productive at bats. That's exactly what they're trying to do. That one flared out towards center field. A couple con defenders converge and the catch is made by the right fielder. Maybe a little confusion, but complain makes the play and retires the sigh, and that'll do it here in the first. No runs, one hit, one left for Bryant's Cabot, the 6A Central Conference champion coming to bats as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau insurance agent. Farm Bureau insurance. Real service. Real people. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. Norma was one of America's very first black comedians. You don't have to be a nun, you just got to live a nun's life. And at 95, she's still doing it. Joni helps me imagine the world because she's so vivid with her lyrics. Celebrate songs of America's returning war veterans, co-written with top hit songwriters. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. Let me take you for a ride on the baseline. We're focused on what matters. That's why we've made our hamburgers square. If you want to experience the delicious taste of Wendy's hamburgers, squares the beef. Cabot Bryant scoreless after half an inning. We've seen what uh, Lady Hornets can do at the plate now. The Lady Panthers get their turn. Complain, Titus, and Bernard set to step into the box and first pitch swinging. And that one's fouled away. And this is our first look at the, the Bryant starting pitcher. Allie White, she's committed to Arkansas Tech, and she's overcome a lot to get to the state championship game. Righty Allie White has velocity mid-50s to low-60s, fast change, drop, rise, screw, curve, drop, <laughs> curve. She has a complete arsenal. Another pitcher, though, that gets a lot of strikeouts. White averages more than one per inning. A check swing did go around. So White early uh, goes ahead. Oh, see, the reason I say she's been through a lot, she had two surgeries her freshman year on an ACL and a thumb. So she's battled a lot. 104 strikeouts this year in 101 innings. 75 hits, ERA just over two. And that check swing again goes foul. Nice job to stay alive by complaint. Bobby, the number for White that impresses me the most is actually the batter against average, .192. So opponents really having a hard time barreling White up, putting the ball in play. Below the Mendoza line, below 200, always good. That one flared over to the left side and again foul. Do kids today even know what the Mendoza no, line is or why it's named yeah, that? Definitely not. <laughs> Probably showing my age and I haven't even touched 40 yet. <laughs> Outside, but again, the Mendoza line probably doesn't matter. If you watch big league baseball, there's all kinds of players below 200. It's all about launch angle and bat speed these days, not about average. Exit velocity. Yep. That one catches a lot of the plate and string them up. White coming back on the inside corner, curve ball that broke middle and into the hands of Camplain. That's exactly what it's designed to do against a lefty batter. Look at how this ball breaks. It's coming onto the inside part of the plate. Camplain doesn't clear the front side. It's clearly in the strike zone. She knows it. It's an excellent pitch to start off the game. So strike out to start the contest for White. That steps Emily Titus, the catcher. That one's fouled into the catcher's mitt. 
Tide is hitting 481 on the season. She's one of the big bats in the lineup. Eight home runs, 32 RBIs. 20 extra base hits for the Cabot catcher. Fouled away at the plate again, 0-2. White's not backing down. She's attacking this Cabot offense. Cabot scored some runs against Bryant in their two contests, six on April the 4th, nine on April the 28th. Expecting a high-scoring affair in this one. That one launched over the left side. That one might have got lost in the sun, and Peyton Stewart couldn't make the play there wide of third. Absolutely got lost in the sun. It's a bright day here in Conway. Stewart doing her best, got a little bit crossed up as she goes to make this drop step of the sun. She's also trying to locate where the base is as well. It's a good effort, but unfortunately that ball drops and now Titus lives another pitch. See if she can take advantage of it. Titus down 0-2. Chopper left side, right to the third base, and this time an easy play for Stewart, throw across the diamond, second out of the inning. That's the law of softball. If somehow you don't make a play, you know the next ball is coming directly to you. That was a good job making the routine play over by Stewart, collecting the ball, nice strong throw over to first. First two outs of the inning recorded. Take a look at the, uh, the Bryant defensive lineup if we've got time for it. Lovell, Haskins, and Hicks across the outfield. Stewart, Nichols, Easterwood, Armstrong, left to right on your infield. Sharply struck to left field, but right at the left fielder level. One pitch is the third out of the inning. One, two, three goes Cabot. And we're after one. We are scoreless. Here is you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Arkansas, what's in your attic? Find out what your heirlooms, antiques, and collectibles are worth. Join us for the filming of a brand new show, Arkansas Treasures. This special event happens at the Arkansas PBS Studios in Conway on August 5th and 6th. Tickets will go quickly, so guarantee your spot by calling or visiting our website. If your item and story are selected for filming, you may end up on our show. Your treasure may be worth more than you know. Two, three, turn it up! Whoa. It's going up in here! Griffin Leggett Funeral Homes, a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports, serving the Conway area located 1751 Dave Ward Drive in Conway. Griffin Leggett's proudly serving our communities in central Arkansas since 1936. We're scoreless after one. Bryant coming up top of the seconds. Lovell, Nichols, and Hicks do up. Five, six, and seven in the batting order. That's our second look at Kayla Bernard. She struck out two in that first inning of work. Going back to your point about making Bernard work inside the circle, that's something that Bryant did well early. 17 pitches for Bernard in the first half of the first inning. So really going to look to see Bryant Try and battle inside the box, make Bernard work. Yes, she's comfortable going a lot of innings. She's been the main pitcher for Cabot, but as a batter, the more pitches that you can see, the more likely it is that you're going to get a hit. Lovell takes that one down the middle. She's hitting 435 this year, 19 RBI, just one home run. She does have 12 extra base hits though. That one misses outside, evens up the count, a run a piece. We are in the top of the second inning. A little graphical issue, if you will, in the bottom right corner. Not correct at the moment. We're working to get that fixed. I believe we have minions who do that. <laughs> I thought I saw them running around yes. here earlier. That one 
Wild slash to the right side. That one's going to be down for the base hit. Second base hit of the contest already for Bryant. So something brewing here for the Lady Hornets. Their second time through. Always big to get your leadoff batter on. This is a beautiful piece of hitting by Lovell. It's a ball on the outer part of the plate. And again, that ball gets deep on Lovell. A little bit of an inside out swing, but barrels it up well, just shoots it through the 3 4 hole. So runner on first, nobody out here in the top of the second. Callie Nichols, the shortstop, hits 352 on the year, got some pop as well. Seven home runs, 21 RBIs. She shows bunt, gets one down. That's going to get the runner over. They do get the out at first, but a nice sacrifice there by Nichols. Beautiful sacrifice by Nichols. In my opinion, sacrifice bunts have become somewhat of a lost art as you've seen the power numbers start to trend up. But Nichols did exactly what she's supposed to do. Squared early, kept the barrel level at the top of the zone. Look at where that ball is. Pushes it directly to Bernard, and that means the only play is over to first base. That ensures that Lovell is able to get to second safely. It's also giving it up for your team as well. Nichols tied for second most on the squad with seven home runs. Time squared to Bunt. Did Hicks, but pulls it back. That one goes to the backstop. Did not catch the bat, so that's going to be a, a pass ball. Heads up base running by Lovell because the ball did not get past Titus by very much, but as soon as she saw the ball hit the turf, look at where this ball is. It's not far behind Titus, but Lovell heads up going and getting the extra base running. For Bryant, that's going to be a key in a game where they've been so tight over the course of the season. Look for the Hornets to really try and be aggressive on the base paths. Hicks fouls that one off. She has 25 RBIs on the season, 407 average. A lot of lofty numbers for this Bryant squad who won 22 contests. You don't get hit 45 home runs as a team <laughs> without having lofty numbers. They've got power they hit for average. A little high. So Hicks now ahead in the count, 2 1. First real threat of that Cabot pitcher. The Kayla Bernards had to face. Bryant runner at third with just one out. That one well out of the zone, 3 and 1. Great job by Titus, though. That ball was just about a half an inch of getting away to the backstop. There's a little real estate back behind home plate to the backstop. Not a lot. So a pass ball is not a guaranteed run, but obviously not something that you want to chance too many times. Now that was an issue last year for Bernard against Bentonville. That one dropped back to the pitcher. Nice job of Bernard to look the runner back instead. No play is made, so Hicks reaches safely. Guess you have to give that an infield single. This, this doesn't make the play. <laughs> It'll go down in the books as an infield single, and Hicks getting away with one. It was off the end of the bat. It was a good job by Bernard to field. She did what she was supposed to do. Look the runner back. In this situation for Cabot, though, nothing is really lost there by allowing Hicks to advance to first. The Lady Panthers did the most important thing, and that is to keep level on third base. So that brings up Macy Hoskins. She squares around a bunt. That one pulled back, though. Hoskins, 425 in the eight hole. How about that for, <laughs> for depth in the lineup? That is the epitome of production up and down. Squares to bunt. That one fouled away at the plate. Hoskins, the 425 average, six home runs, 27 RBIs, 14 extra base hits. She's coming around to score 23. If every coach had an eight hole hitter with those kind of numbers, <laughs> then again, I guess every coach would be a Hall of Famer. They don't even have eight hole hitters with those kind of numbers at the collegiate level. Maybe oh. Oklahoma. Yeah. But not a whole lot of <laughs> other teams. Yeah. The eight hole, the old eight hole hitter at Oklahoma is an All American everywhere else. <laughs> One and one that counts. That one misses. So again, Bernard gonna have to work from behind. The first inning we saw her working from ahead. This time Bryant's been a little more patient, making her find the strike zone. The other thing that Bryant done is uh, Bryant has done rather is they've been showing bunt and forcing Bernard to bring that ball back into the strike zone. That one gets down. Just tries to come home, throw his legs, and Bryant scores the first run. 
Bernard might have hesitated just a touch before she came home with it and tagged just late. And the Lady Hornets take the early lead. Bryant going with the suicide squeeze. It's a gutsy call early on in the game, but Hoskins squares late enough, pushes it just far enough. When you're suicide squeezing, you want that ball within the 10-foot range, pushed it forward, level breaking on the pitch. That's a nice slide in, just got the left hand in. Look where the left hand goes. It is right on the back corner of the plate. You can see there, great angle. Good work by the camera crew, just in safely. Well, Bill Villain swings and misses at that one, so she's behind in the count. 1-0, the runners on first and second now for the Lady Hornets of Bryant. And then looking to add to their early 1-0 lead. They try to change speeds there, couldn't get the villain to chase. That's 1-1. One one. Bobby, it is so important for a Bryant team that has lost twice to Cabot to have the momentum and the energy to go out and score for first. It just gives you extra confidence. That one up and in. The villain works herself back ahead in the count. Now two to one. And I'm glad you mentioned that, Dorian, because you think about a team who's, who's 0-2 against, you know, a conference champion that hadn't lost a game in their, in their classification all season. And all of a sudden you jump on them early. Obviously the stage of playing in the state championship, you never know where those nerves are going to be and how do you handle that adversity. A little surprising. I won't say that Cabot's playing with nerves, but if there were nerves, you would expect them more to be on the Bryant side than Cabot because mm -hmm. Cabot's been here more recently. They won the state title in 2019. But for Bryant, they're coming in. There's really nothing to lose. They've already lost to Cabot twice. The Lady Hornets get to play a little bit more free. Chase that one out of the zone to the villain. Stays at two and two. Again, Bernard. A 1.17 ERA. So that's the one she normally gives up her in a contest. We'll see if Bryant can tack on to it. This is a huge opportunity for the Lady Hornets here in the top of the second. That one catches the outer portion of the plate. Called third strike. Third strike out of the contest for Bernard. And that was a big out for the cabin pitcher. Big out and a big pitch, a curve ball on the outer part of the plate, just spins it right back in across the black. Pavilion just caught looking, have to be aggressive in that situation though. To your point, Bryant cannot rest on just a single run. Back to the top of the lineup, Abby Gentry. And her, <laughs> gaudy is the only way you could describe it, 600 batting average. And this is a sport where you're successful if you fail seven out of 10 times and well, 600 is obviously a lot better than that. <laughs> that one off the edge of the plate, one and one. It's not just the 600 batting average, though, for Gentry. The 700 on base percentage is the number that really stands out to me because that is really an indication of what you're doing for your team. Everyone loves to talk about average. But how often are you getting on base means how many times are you making things happen? How many times are you extending the inning? So for me, on base percentage gets overlooked a lot, but it's actually, to me, the most important batting statistic that there is. Our 24 walks drawn. Right. This obviously helps that on base percentage and make it 25 as she walks on four pitches. A little bit of respect there for Bernard, recognizing that Gentry is a very powerful hitter with two runners on, capable of tacking on some insurance runs. That might be the unintentional intentional walk, <laughs> as that brings up Cadence Armstrong. Not that she can't get the job done with a 435 average, but maybe the lesser of two evils. The other thing that this does, though, is with two outs and the base is loaded, it takes a little bit of pressure off of Cabot's defense because now there's a force at any base. You're not always having to go get the lead runner at first base, so it gives you a little bit of an extra cushion. Bases loaded, top of the second. Bryant's already pushed one across. It's conference rival Cabot, but can they take advantage? Armstrong struck out back in the first. Chopped foul left side. And you can see the slap approach and making contact. Make the defense make a play. Make the defense make a play, but this is typically a difficult situation for lefty slappers because in an RBI situation, a lot of lefty slappers will play small ball on the infield. Armstrong is going to have to find a way to get it through the infield to extend the inning. 
That one flared again left side. Now she's down 0-2. We've seen Bernard go to the curveball when she gets ahead in the count in these situations. We'll see if she comes back to it. Well, if my memory serves me correctly, that's the pitch she got Armstrong with back on the last frame. And Bernard's best pitch are the, the ones that move east to west, screwball, curveball. Uh, Trying to get her to chase that one up and out of the zone, but Armstrong's not biting. It's two to one. Good discipline there by Armstrong, but it's a good decision by Bernard trying to elevate that ball up out of the zone with a little tail action on the outside. Those are two spots in the zone that are really difficult for lefties to handle. That one again, slap foul. Armstrong staying alive. That pitch count ever climbing Armstrong. for Bernard. Sorry about that. Armstrong doing just enough to stay alive inside the box, not trying to do too much with the pitch. You'll hear people talk about that. Right now, Armstrong just trying to make contact. And Bobby, to your point, make Cabot make a play. Make them get her out at first. Bernard's 1-2 delivery again spoiled by Armstrong. So she's seeing plenty of pitches. Trying to blow this inning open for the Lady Hornets. Left side of Cabot's infield clearly expecting small ball towards that portion because both the third baseman and the shortstop drawn in. Shortstop's actually playing inside the baseline over on the left side of the field. Armstrong again goes to that left side, again fouled away. It wouldn't surprise me to see Bernard maybe try to bust something on the inside part of the plate after we've seen pitch after pitch on the outer part of the plate that Armstrong has just been fouling off down the third baseline. One, two delivery from Bernard. Again, tries to go outside. That time too far out. Armstrong doesn't chase and evens the count at two and two. This is a great at bat here by Armstrong. Got down in the count now, steadily working herself back to even at two and two. Is fouled off four, five pitches. This is boarding on a 10 pitch at bat. So a big pitch here. If you get to the full count, obviously the runners can get in motion. That one fouled again. Left side. Just doing enough to get contact is Armstrong. Uh, she's not thinking about that right now, but even if it goes awry from here, already a quality at bat from mm -hmm. Armstrong. Reminds me of Derek Jeter in the way that he just used to foul balls mm -hmm. off down the first baseline consistently. That one way out of the zone. Again, what that does, though, it, it kind of, as, as a hitter, you're forcing the pitcher to maybe think, okay, I need to expand the zone and try to get her to chase. Then all of a sudden, she doesn't. And now Armstrong's worked this count full, and now the runners are going to get in motion. And yeah, so something out of the infield could score two. Absolutely. It's a chess match between both pitcher and hitter. So the runners, that one, ring them up. A little delayed reaction from the home plate umpire, but caught just enough of the plate. Bernard gets out of a huge jam with a big strikeout, but Bryant strikes first. They take a 1-0 lead through one and a half innings here in the 6A state championship, and you're watching it live on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank. Member FDIC. We never gonna stop. We never gonna stop. Might be answer time for the Lady Panthers of Cabot's Bryant's is taking an early one-nothing lead as through an inning and a half here in the 6A state championship game, but four runners left on base for Bryant. You know, 
Dorian leaving the bases loaded there in the second to got them wanting more, but obviously Bernard did what she had to do to limit the damage. Bernard coming up big after giving up the early run, but to your point, Bryant with four runners on through the first two innings. That's a lot. Here's a look at the Bryant defense. Level Hoskins, Hicks across the outfield. You see the infield, Stewart, Nichols, Easterwood, and Armstrong. And then the battery mate we've talked about, White and Gentry. The second time out on the field for that Bryant defense. Emily Whitman, the first baseman for Cabot, going to step in. She's not going to waste any time. First pitch swinging right to the second baseman. 4-3 and put out if you're scoring at home. And we know you are. <laughs> Cabot continuing their aggressive approach at the plate, but the Lady Panthers playing right into White's hands through just 11 pitches in the first inning. Ten of those were strikes, now just one pitch, one out here in the second. Conversely, Bryant has really made Bernard work inside the circle. Gracie Hawk now steps in, 4 with 3 average. That one catches good port of the plate as well. Allie White wasting little time coming at these Cabot hitters. That's what White wants to do here in the bottom half of the second after her team got her that leadoff run, really go after Cabot. Able to hold off there. Does Hawk even up the count at one and one? That one sent right back up the middle. It's going to find its way to center field. First base hit of the contest for the Lady Panthers. Good swing from Hawk on a ball that was down the center of the plate. She got over the top of it a little bit with a little bit of chop action, but hit it hard enough to scoot it up the middle of the field past Nichols. And there's something to pay attention to with this turf field. It plays differently than dirt. Balls on the ground are going to move just a little bit faster than they would traditionally on a dirt field. Shoren on first now. It brings up Scales. That one well off. Uh, excuse me, well over the strike zone. Tips off the glove of Titus, and that's going to allow correction off the glove of Gentry. My sheet's in the right order. Either way, Hawks on second for Cabot. So is that the biggest difference on this turf field? I know a lot of people talk about base running. That, that, that may be one of the biggest issues, but obviously the speed of ground balls. Take a look at Coach Chris Cope there for Cabot. The, the base running and the fielding are the two biggest things. You're correct, base running, you have a little bit more momentum on the field, you slide differently. But for me, growing up playing on traditional dirt, you're gonna get true hops on turf. You don't have to worry about misplayed balls or missed hops that are bouncing off of, of rocks and whatnot. You're gonna get more, truer hops, so the ball does move a little bit faster. I called the collegiate game between Liberty and UCA on this field earlier this year, and that's one of the things that Liberty head coach Dot Richardson mentioned the most. She said this ball just moves so much faster through the infield. Time is called as White taking a little too long to deliver the pitch. At least that's what Emma Scales thought. <laughs> Scales up 2-1 and on the count. She's hitting 389 this season. Again, being really deliberate there is the battery of White and Gentry. I like the decision, though, by Scales to continue to step out with Bryant having that momentum in the top half of the second inning. If you're Cabot, what you want to do is you want to break up that rhythm. You want to create a little confusion, a little miscommunication, and try to work yourself back into this, get a little bit of um, discomfort, we'll say, inside the circle for White. Meeting of the minds for Bryant. Slow this down just a touch. Hawks on fur, oh, advance to first on a single, now on second after the wild pitch. So runner on second here for Cabot. Scale swings under that one and he evens up the count at two apiece. Nice movement on the pitch from White, moving it from the middle to the outside part of the plate. Scale's just a little bit over top. Might have dropped just too early. At least that's what the thoughts of the home plate umpire thoughts. So now the count's full. Pretty pitch, though. The drop action with a little bit of an off speed makes it very difficult to adjust to. Full count to Scales. Trying to get inside on the hands. Did White there, and Scales fouls that one off left side. Good battle there by Scales. 
White trying to bring the screwball in on the hand. Scales able to foul it off the handle. Opens up the front side just enough to be able to foul that ball away. 15 RBIs, six extra base hits for Emma Scales, the Cabot's designated hitter. She fouls that one back. A really good crowd here in Conway, as you might expect. These two schools, what, 30 minutes from here, maybe? Maybe. If Interstate 430 is backed up like it normally <laughs> is, probably took Bryant to get here a little longer to get here. Swing and miss. Scales couldn't slow down the bat on that changeup. And the second strikeout of the contest for White. Pretty changeup out of the hand of White. Look at how this no, ball moves differently. It. You see the spin. Like it's just a little bit less. Harder. That gets Scales out in front. She's leaning on the front foot. The key to hitting a changeup is being able to identify it out of the hand early. Brings up Jarrah Potter. She's first pitch swing and right back up the middle. And that's going to bring a run home for the Lady Panthers. And Jarrah Potter, RBI single up the middle. We are tied at a run apiece. Big RBI from Potter in the bottom half of the second to bring this game level at one. And Cabot's success in this inning has come hunting on that first pitch. They are going after the first offering from Allie White. They know it's been the best pitch that they're going to see. Look at where this ball is located. It's right down the heart of the plate, just about thigh high. Potter going right after it, getting it up the middle. Easterwood may have gotten a glove on it just enough to slow it down as it got out into center field and no chance to get Hawk as she was running. Potter RBI number 21 on the season, third most on this Lady Panther team. And that is not only a big run because it ties the game, a big response for this Lady Panthers offense. The response is bigger than the run because Bryant had that momentum. They've had runners on in both innings. So for Cabot to come out and score here in the bottom of the second, it's the response that you would expect from the team that went through the 6A Central undefeated. Alyssa Duncan steps in, the shortstop. One home run, 10 RBIs on the year for Duncan. That one misses outside. Evens up the count, one and one. And we'll see how Allie White responds. 2.07 ERA. She's not used to giving up a ton of runs herself. That one up and out of the zone. Just 51 runs allowed, 101 innings of work. 51 runs allowed, but not many 15 of, those were, of them, yeah. or rather 16 now, have, have come to Cabot. So yeah. it's been Cabot that has really been able to get the lion's share of those runs. I know you're good at math. I expect you to know the percentage. That's not my that's not my forte. <laughs> nope. I've done all the math <laughs> I can do today. <laughs> two and two pitch. That one roped in the left field. That one's going to get down. Station to station, though, as that one's cut off by level down the left field line. Nice piece of hitting there from the bottom of the line of a Duncan who came into this contest hitting below 200 delivers in her first at bat here in the state championship game. Duncan got a good barrel on the pitch from White. Middle third did not get it in enough on the hands of Duncan and Duncan able to clear the front hip. Look at where the contact point is. It's in front of that front hip able to pull that ball on a line into left field. Now we've talked about Bryant's production, but let's not forget that Cabot is a team that hits 382 as a unit. So this Lady Panthers offense is very capable of producing runs. Ali Autry now steps in for the first time today. The 9-0 hitter, 262 average, 12 RBIs, pair of home runs. Big spot here, runners on first and second. Two down here, bottom second. That one. Bobbled by the shortstop, hitting so hard it blew the camera out. So that was going to be an E6. And the bases are loaded for the top of the order for the Lady Panthers. Big moment early on in this game. Cabot with a chance to really try and give themselves some space here in the bottom of the second inning. That's why you're seeing this meeting here at the mound. Just calm everybody down after a couple of hits and an error. And now Cabot really starting to grab that momentum. Cabot's low to the bases. It all started with one out, Gracie Hawk singled. She came around to score. Jared Potter also has a hit in this inning. Now the air has kept this inning alive. 1-1, one, one, bases loaded. We saw Bryant leave the bases loaded in the top half of this frame. We'll see if Cabot can push one across and take their first lead of the contest. 
come campaign here, I'm going hunting on a first pitch. That's where Cabot's had the success in this inning. And the Lady Panthers know that White does not want to walk anyone. So she's going to have to bring something that's near the plate. And playing first pitch swing and pops it up on the right side. Camped under it is Easterwood at second base and a big pitch to get out of the jam there for Bryant. One run comes across and we've played two innings here in the 6A state championship game and we are all square. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car to your first home, to your first child and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring for everything that matters most to you and your family there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love your local farm bureau insurance agent farm bureau insurance real service real people this month on arkansas pbs I know your grandfather will never consent to me. Is it not perfectly dreadful, Harriet, to learn that our niece's honor is now suddenly lost? Fearfully romantic, though. Elizabeth! She's missing, and I'm worried sick. Mom, you don't believe me. You've got to stop all this nonsense. The world-famous thief. Father Brown's friend and nemesis is in trouble. Flambeau is now a killer. For once, I'm innocent. Only on Arkansas PBS. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. For those in the community looking for meal options after the game, Raising Cane's is known for their hand-buttered chicken fingers and special sauce. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers, one love. It's a big answer run there for Cabot as we are all tied at one through two innings of play here in the 6A State Championship. Should this game go 1-1 late into the game, both Cabin and Brian are going to look back at the second inning as missed opportunities mm -hmm. because both teams left the bases loaded, had a chance to get some extra insurance. Allie White steps in to start the top half of the third. She singled to left back in her first plate appearance. Time sent out to third, actually deflects off the third baseman's glove, and White can't get there in time. Call that 5 6 3 on the putout, and a big first out of this inning. That was bang, bang. Nice, strong throw across the diamond out of the hand of Nichols. And you're right, the ball just tipped off of the third baseman's glove. Stewart Nichols has to collect it and hurry the throw down. White out by a half a step. So one down now, Peyton Stewart steps in. She flew out to right field. The first plate appearance. First pitch swinging again. Chopper out to short. Easy play, quickly, two down. Best case scenario for Cabot and Bernard coming off of that second, uh, top of the second rather, where she threw 34 pitches to come back in the top of the third in a tie game and work quickly through the first two batters for Bryant. That's exactly what you want. Get your team back into the dugout, go back to work at the plate. Yep, 17 pitches in the first, 34 in the second. Now she needs only three, two pitches, excuse me, to get things in the first two outs, three pitches, if I can count. I was gonna say, I thought you told me you were good at math. Well, you know. I guess math and counting are two I, different I, things. Yeah, I set, I set the bar way too high, way too <laughs> early in this one. We got a long way to go, yeah. it's fine. It's a long weekend ahead of us. This is game one of six. As far as softball championships are concerned. If you're interested in all the high school sports going on this weekend, get to campus. We have 18 more championships to hand out this weekend, including this one here today. Such a fun time of year. That one fouled away. Soccer state championships get underway tomorrow at Estes Stadium. And right down campus here at UCA, of course, we've already seen two baseball titles handed out to Taylor Tigers and won the 1A title. And the Harbor Wildcats, the 6A state championship. So we're seeing the largest and smallest classifications in action today. Both baseball and softball. 
foul straight back, evens up the count two and two. We'll see the Taylor Tigers on the softball field as well coming up a we little will. bit later. We will, and they've been known to win some titles. <laughs> Just a few. Yeah. Eight fast pitch softball state championships. That's the most in state history. And they're taking on one of their biggest rivals tonight, Bradley, but that's later. We're talking about Brian Cabot right now. That one right down the pipe strike three call, and that'll end the inning. Really nice inning of work, a much needed quick inning of work there for Bernard as Cabot sets down Bryant in order. One, two, three. After two and a half innings, we're tied as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. People would come from miles around to come to 9th Street just to see what it was like. I'm saying this was the mecca of entertainment in the South. I want to play one more for the South. We thought we was on top of the world. You know? Download the PBS video app or watch online. Can you see her greatness when you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Today's player, a uh, standout player from Roger Heritage High School is Emily Carpenter, shortstop senior out of 3.4 GPA. Her college plans to attend NEO in Miami, Oklahoma to play softball and continue her education. Emily Carpenter from Roger's Heritage, our standout player today. Cabot and Bryant all squared up in a run apiece. Both have left the bases loaded already once in this contest. We're in the bottom of the third as Cabot steps up to the plate. See if they can figure out the enigma that is Allie White. They seem to figure out White in the, bot or in the bottom of the second inning. And the way that Cabot did that was aggressive in their takes. All of their base hits came when they swung at the first pitch. So I expect to see that trend continue and really look for Cabot to go after good pitches early in the count. The catcher Ty this steps in. Again, first pitch swinging. Fouls that one away. She grounds out the third her first time up. A new pitcher in for Bryant. Emily Miller replaces White. Second pitch chopped to third. A nice strong throw gets her there. And Titus has grounded out the third twice today. And Emily Miller comes in and retires the first. The batter she faces. Bryant making a pitching change as we take another look. Ground ball over to third, strong throw over to first. But Bryant making a pitching change because of Cabot's ability to get to White early on, bringing in Miller velocities a little bit lower, mid 50s from the righty. Features that change up. That is Miller's best pitch. She'll throw it at any count, but Miller really working with the fastball change, curve, screw, rise, and drop. But the reason she's coming in here is especially because of that difference in velocity. It's going to be about 10 miles an hour slower than White. So White moved to first base. So she's still available to come back if they ever need her. But Miller hasn't had a large sample size of her in the circle this year. As that one is lifted to left. And that one's got some carry. And it is gone. The solo shot to left by Kayla Bernard. And she's helping her own cause as the Cabot pitcher launches her 15th home run of the season. And the Lady Panthers have their first lead of the contest. Bernard helping herself out, got a pitch down the center of the plate, kept her weight back. That was the biggest thing in this swing is Bernard allowed the ball to get deep, hit off of her back hip and through the legs. You saw the power turn there, how comfortable she was in the back leg. There was no doubt about it. That ball, you knew it was gone the second it came off the barrel. Definitely had a different sound when it made contact there. I was, I was mentioning about Miller. 
She's pitched only 18 innings this year, giving up 21 hits with an ERA of 3.1 or 3.51, excuse me. It's a big stage for her to come in, and obviously Bernard made her pay. She put that one out in the cheap seats. Technically, they cost the same as the seats <laughs> behind the home plate, but we're not going to get into that right Semantics, now. Semantics, I get yeah. you. So here's Whitman. She grounded out the first on the first pitch swing in her first plate appearance. And Bobby, you say the home runs, they sound different. I'll tell you, they feel different, <laughs> too. When you square it up, when it's sweet, you can just tell when you make contact. That one up out of the zone, 2-0. Two to one Cabot as we play here in the third. Whitman 351 on the season. That one stays high, doesn't drop down in the zone. So Whitman ahead in the count, 3-0. Green light here? No. With the new pitcher who's still struggling to find the strike zone has given up a home run as a batter. I'm forcing her to, to throw a strike and throw it consistently before I'm willing to go after one. Yep, taking that one all the way was Whitman. Strike down the middle. Still a hitter's count, three and one. Whitman's got five home runs this year. Had to sit back and wait on that one. Got to flip the wrist. A nice job. Good piece of hitting. A single out in the center. Whitman adjusting to the changeup out of the hand of Miller. She kept the weight back. That's going to be the key. So pay attention to that as Cabot works through the order going up against Miller. And the changeup is even more difficult because it's coming in right around 50 to 45 miles an hour. And so being able to identify it, reset, and then drive the hands through. That one misses low and away to Gracie Hawk, who singled and scored in the previous inning. It's the bottom of the third, 2-1 Cabot. Out in front, Kayla Bernard, the pitcher. Solo home run in there in this frame. That one catches the outside corner. Quick snap throw to first by Gentry. Not in time, though. It's a good thought. Try to catch Whitman napping a touch. I agree. It's a good thought by Gentry. Not just trying to catch the base runner off balance, but get a little momentum back. It's a little dead. That one flared out to short. Easy play there by Callie Nichols. She records the second out of the inning. A little bit out in front of that was Hawk. But to bring it back to the momentum as we take another look, just underneath it, a little bit out in front on the front foot, not letting that ball get quite deep enough. As a hitter, you really want to hit. Sometimes it's really hard to be patient. But Brian is going to need to get something that's going to provide them a little bit of a spark. You can see the... The change up there, full effect. It's just really hard <laughs> as a hitter when you're expecting, you know, 50 to 60 coming at you, and all of a sudden, you know, and it's not a rainbow, but that one really slow. It probably looks like a beach ball, and all of a sudden it disappears on you. That one picked her off. Nice job there by Gentry. It catches Whitman napping and guns her down at first base to end the inning. 3-1, excuse me, 2-3 on the putout. That's going to end the frame. But Cavett takes their first lead of the contest. A Kayla Bernard solo shot to left. And the Lady Panthers have a 2-1 lead as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. The 2023 new member challenge is underway. We're over halfway to reaching our goal of gaining 2,023 new members by June 30th, which means we are closer to receiving the $25,000 challenge fund provided by individual donors and Arkansas businesses. If you recently became a new member or are already a donor to Arkansas PBS, thank you for supporting our station and the programs you love. If you are not yet a member, there is still time to help us reach our new member challenge goal.
take you for a ride on the baseline. Let's go! Arcare is a proud sponsor of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Arcare network of medical clinics and pharmacies helps to keep you in the game, playing your best. Arcare, so you can live your story. We have a riot. Not bad with a fourth inning. First pitch fouled down the left field line and quickly ahead is Bernard as we are here in the fourth. Pitching with a one run lead, Bernard really going to go after Bryant early in the count, go after the Hornets hitters and make them prove that they're going to be able to catch up to the speed and the spin that Bernard brings. Catches the outside corner there, Bernard now. Up 0-2. So she's helped, helped herself at the plate. Does that help her settle down in the circle as well? Absolutely. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Another punch out for Bernard. She's starting to feel it in the circle. And I guess that probably answers my own question. And as a pitcher, any time that you can help your own cause by pummeling a home run, give yourself a lead, it just centers you a little bit more inside the circle. Here's to take a look at the Cabot defense. Potter, Autry, Campaign, and the outfield. Hawk, Duncan, Nicholson, and Whitman. Bernard and Titus is the battery. He's swinging a miss there from Hicks. And Bernard certainly seems like a pitcher with some refound confidence. Not wasting any time coming right after these Bryant hitters. Again, after throwing 50 pitches in the first two innings, she, know, she probably wants to lighten her load a touch. Able to do that in the second inning. Bernard threw just eight pitches to go through three batters, but Bryant played into her hands a little bit. They got good pitches around the zone. They went after them. But what Bryant needs to do now is down in the count, or down rather two to one. They really need to work inside the box, make Bernard work a little bit more, try and see if they can see more pitches, and potentially work some free passes. I went outside to Hicks. An infield single for Leah back in the second. 407 average on the season. See if she can get something going here with one out in the fourth. That one down and in. Three and one's the count. I've been impressed with the way that Hicks has gone after her at bats and her strategy and the way that she's going to the plate. She is really not allowed Bernard to expand the zone. She's really forced her to come into her zone. That one sent right back up the middle and base hit there for Leah Hicks. So she's on base safely for the second time in their two plate appearances. Hicks timed it up perfectly. You can tell from the direction of the ball right back up the middle. As a hitter, that's when you know you've timed it perfectly. Hit it sharply, too. Made really crisp contact. Bryant needs more of that. This is a two-run game. By no means are the Hornets out of this at all. Five hits for Cabot. Now three hits for Bryant. The ball comes right back in on the center of the plate. It was supposed to be a screwball, but it didn't break in on the hands. Hoskin fouls that one away. Bernard again attacking the zone early in the count. Bryant will see, already left four runners on base in the first three innings. So they need to find a way to take advantage of the traffic on the base pass. That one catches the outside corner for the called strike. Now it's 0-2. There, she's trying to accumulate another strikeout. She's been busy. That one, though, left lifted to center field. Nice running catch there by Ali Autry. That one was well struck by Hoskins, but good defensive alignment by Autry. She makes the play. Adam Ball off the bat of Hoskins, barreled up well. There are a lot of power behind it, but just at Autry out in center field. Autry actually makes a really good catch because you can see how her glove got above her head. Line drives like that, they tail and they continue to rise. So that was a great last second adjustment by Autry. Had that ball gotten to the fence, there's a good chance Brian could have tied this game. Swing and a miss by Bavillon. The nine hole hitter, she struck out back in the second. Two outs, runner on first. 
for Bryant. So you play here in the fourth. Up out of zone and try to catch the runner behind. Can't do so, though. Six strikeouts already for Bernard. That one lifted to left. That one's got some carry to it. It's over. Potter's head in left field. We'll see if they send Hicks. Around third, she comes, and she's going to cross the plate in a big RBI double for Bavillon. And this time, it's all tied up again in two-piece. Bryant's ability per, to produce one to nine is what made that possible. RBI double, two outs. That's a huge hit off the bat of Pavilion. And what unfortunately played against Cabot there is the fact that the fence at Ferris Field, it plays differently depending on where this ball hits. Another mistake in the center of the plate. Pavilion able to square it up. As it gets off the fence, the bottom half of the fence at Ferris Field is a little bit tighter. Those balls tend to ricochet and get back into the field, which is exactly what happened to Potter. And that extra carry was what allowed Hicks to be able to score from first. 14th RBI on the season for Emma. She's committed to play at a Washington Baptist. That's a big, big retaliation run there for Bryant that scores this game up at two apiece. We kind of thought there might be some runs scored in this contest. <laughs> Just a few. Their first two meetings produced enough. Ten combined runs in the first contest back on April the 4th and then 17. A little over a month and a half ago on April the 28th. 17 with a combined seven home runs between the two teams. And this has the feeling of a prize fight. It's, it's yeah. a slugfest, both teams trading punches. And in a game like this, it typically comes down to the final inning. Who can make the play when the pressure is on the most? So it's 2-2. Two -two. Bernard's got to find a way to get out of this jam, though, for Cabot. A runner on second for the top of the order and the always dangerous Abby Gentry. She struck out and walked today. Ooh. Gentry smokes one down the left field line just foul. <laughs> that was an angry hack. That's a good way to describe it. A ball up in the zone. It was a rise ball. They didn't quite get over the shoulders. Gentry all over it. It would not surprise me to see here Bernard come back with an off speed, something low and away to really work against the aggressiveness of Gentry. That's Specs Easterwood now running out at second base. That one down and in to Gentry. After a swing like that, Gentry obviously all over it. You kind of avoid her, especially with first base open and two outs. As a pitcher, I don't necessarily try to avoid her. I try to avoid her heat zones in the strike zone. So working low and in, working low and away, using my off speed to be able to get her out in front. And again, you see there, ooh, a little bit of a high tag. You think these two teams know each other? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Gets the benefit of the outside strike there. So Bernard now up 1-2. Yeah, look at how close Gentry is on that front line of the box, really trying to take away that outside corner. Gentry lines one to left. That one's going to get down off the fence. That's going to allow Easterwood to score. And Bryant has regained the lead after the laser off the bat of Gentry. Gentry made the adjustment inside the box from the pitch before that was called a strike on the outside corner. She took a half step in to really crowd the inside of the plate. This has allowed her to get plate coverage. Look at that contact point. It's up in the zone, but because of where the barrel was in relation to the plate, that allowed Gentry to get full clearance long through the zone. Really nice piece of hitting two outs with an RBI double to give Bryant their first lead. Yeah, you always... You know, as a pitcher, I know you have that thought process of I can't let their best player beat me. Right. But that time, Gentry had the better of it, and she ropes one off the left field fence and puts Bryant back out in front, 3-2. to two. The flip side of that argument, though, is you want best on best. So if you are going to beat me, I want your best to beat my best. Hotel accommodations and sponsorship for the 2023 Arkansas High School Baseball and Softball Championship broadcast provided by Hilton Garden Inn, 805 Amity Road in Conway, and the home two suites at 820 Building Drive in Conway. So Bryant's responded two runs here in the fourth, and they've touched up a Caleb Bernard for three already today. We knew these two teams were going to duke it out. One or two runs 
likely not going to get the job done. And that's kind of where we're sitting right now. But a lot of traffic on the base pass for both these squads. You can see there, 77 total pitches already for Bernard. And you've seen some contests, but especially throughout the season, they may not throw 30, 77 an entire game. <laughs> They're making her work. And not going to be an efficient game for either pitcher today, given the strength of both Bryant and Cabot's lineup. Both Bernard, White, and Miller for Bryant going to really have to work. It's, it is a slugfest. That's the best way to describe this game right now. Three runs, five hits, and an error for Bryant. That one catch, uh, no, not, did not catch the bottom of the zone. Two runs, five hits, no errors for the Lady Panthers. That's the line scores. We're at the top of the fourth. It's three to two. And Bryant out in front. So Bryant hasn't won a state championship since, I believe, 2012. I'll find it in my notes. They won three in a row back then. That one does call to strike. Cabot hasn't raised the trophy since 2019. A runner up last year. Bernard going with the screwball, bringing it back across the center of the plate, low in the zone. That's a very difficult pitch for hitters to adjust to. That one fouled away. As Easterwood's pitch, hitting for Miller here. So they've lifted her designated player role. So Easterwood now batting. Swing and a miss there. Bernard changed speeds and gets the punch out. So the damage is done, though, for Bryant as they push a couple across. And they take a 3-2 to two lead. Plenty of action ahead. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. What exactly did they get wrong? That Arkansas values our teachers. The House and Senate thought was very disingenuous. Arkansas Week is celebrating 40 years of public affairs programming. From news analysis to election and legislative coverage, see why Arkansas Week has become a staple for thousands of viewers every week. Tune in Fridays and Sundays and stay up to date the rest of the week by signing up for our newsletter at myarpbs.org slash sign up. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. The Children's Clinic of Conway and Greenbrier is a proud supporter of Arkansas PBS Sports. The Children's Clinic of Conway and Greenbrier serving Conway and surrounding areas with locations at 2505 College Avenue in Conway and 10 Lois Lane in Greenbrier. Big inning there for Bryant as they've regained the lead. It's 3-2 on rival Cabot here in the 6A state championship game. We're almost halfway home, bottom of the fourth. See what Cabot can respond with. We've got the bottom of the order coming up. Jara Potter, RBI single her last time up. Gets the call on the outside corner. And does Miller. She stays in the pitch. It's her second inning of work on the mound. That one stays up and out of the zone. Easterwood in the second base. Now playing defensively. Bonvillain goes to the designated player. So all kinds of moves in the lineup. Everything in this game is so matchup based, especially <laughs> as you get later into the innings with a tight game. It's consistently moving pieces, a chess match. What changes can you make defensively to try to keep race runners off the bases? What changes can you make at the plate to try and generate some offense? 
Again, Miller just 18 innings of work this season, has 10 strikeouts, has walked only one, so the command's been good. So she settles down now that she has the lead. That one's up and out of the zone, and almost as I talk about how great her command <laughs> is, she's run the count full. It's a softball version of broadcaster's <laughs> jinx. That one fouled away. Coaching staff showing a lot of confidence in Miller, though, putting her in in this situation without that body of work that Allie White has had, really allowing her to work in a tough situation. Potter swings away in a full count, finds a hole on the left side. Now Potter's two for two on the day, a pair of singles. First to center, this one to left. Big at bat for Cabot in the bottom of the fourth inning after falling behind 3-2 in the top of the fourth. Responding with the leadoff batter, getting on with a line drive. And Cabot refusing to go away. They're still battling in this game. Leadoff man on for Cabot. And that's going to bring up Alyssa Duncan. She singled back in the second. The bottom of the order getting the job done for Cabot. Substitution over at first, going to run her in. I describe all the substitution rules in softball, but <laughs> we might finish up on Tuesday of next week. <laughs> it can be confusing, although this, I believe, is a pinch runner because Scale's not a pitcher or a catcher, so it would have to be a pinch run sub substitution. Correct. That was Potter, who's now at the plate. Scales on the previous at bat. Oh, Bunt down there. Throw to first. They do get out. Potter, but advances the runner. Another beautiful sacrifice. Jara Potter, very technically sound in her sacrifice here moved up in the box to cut the pitch, squared early, and then just being able to drop it down the first baseline, that forces the play to go to first base. Good job by Gentry to get out of her stance quickly, bare hands it, strong throw down to first, but sacrificing runners into scoring position is so crucial. Here is Alyssa Duncan, I got a little ahead of myself. She singled back in the second now, runner in scoring position, Cabot trying to tie this contest up once again. Duncan chops one to the right side. Play made by Easterwood. It's going to advance the runner to third. And now there are two down. Even though that was a ground ball to the right side, it's still a productive out off of the bat of Alyssa Duncan. It functions very similar to a sacrifice because what you're doing if you're Cabot, the runner that you care about isn't the runner inside the box. You care about the runner on the base pass. So this swing, ball in the center of the plate. Duncan's just a little bit behind it, inside out, pulls it over to the right side of the field. But the runner does advance to third, and so now it is an RBI opportunity with a chance to tie the game. Peyton Nicholson's the runner at third. Ali Autry steps into the plate. She reached on an air her first time up. Another scoring opportunity for the Lady Panthers. Out of the zone. There have been traffic on the base pass. This hasn't been your... A prototypical, I guess, high school softball game. A lot of times you see it's one nothing, two to one. You know, not much traffic out there, but today these two teams are putting the ball in play, making the pitcher work. Now those days of zero to one, <laughs> two to three, those days are over yeah. though, given the techno uh, technological advancements, the bats, and just the, really the evolution of the game. 3-0 pitch, does catch enough of the plate there. So Autry now up 3-1 in the count, runner on third. That one stays elevated and Autry draws the two out walks. The runner's on the corner now. And top of the order, Camp Lane. It's 0 for 4. 
patient at bat by Autry in the nine hole, knowing the importance of the situation. Two outs, runner on third. She does not expand the zone, allows herself to work the free number pass and keep the inning going eight, to roll it up to the top playing. of the lineup. Cam Plain struck out in the first, popped out to second in the second. Big opportunity here, though. Runners on first and third. A chance to tie the game. Cabot throwing left three stranded in this contest. That one stays elevated. Just couldn't stay back long enough on that one. To pull the trigger and watch as that one fall into the strike zone. 364 hitter, eight RBIs, five doubles and a triple for complain. This does get enough of that one, fouls it away. There's something to be said for a pitcher who is effectively wild, we'll say, when they're <laughs> missing the strike zone because as a batter, you can't ever really get comfortable because you don't know what's going to be a strike, what is not. You can't really work yourself into a groove where you feel like you're consistently seeing strikes. Can't play see how well she watches the ball in just trying to top it gets a little bit too high yep. strike three called there as Camplain goes down on strikes for the second time today and Cabot leaves a pair on the path we're through four Bryant three Cabot two you're watching the Centennial Make State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports this month on Arkansas PBS the more time I spend in nature, I realize how fragile everything is. Give nature a chance and it'll come right back. That's what we're asking for, is to give the right world a chance. The mystery ship thought Titanic would, would not sink. How could any ship leave a ship, especially of Titanic size, in distress? Only on Arkansas PBS. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better, and you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. Let's take a look at how we got here in the 6A state championship game. Bryant struck first as Macy Hawkins laid down the bunt. Leah Hicks at the second made a couple goalie level scored, but Cabot came right back. Jaripotis RBI single. Then the big blow. A Kayla Bernard put one into orbits out to left field. Just one swing and that's how she does it right there to a uh, solo homer gave uh, Cabot a 2-1 lead, but it's been Bryant since then. They responded in the fourth. Bovillan doubled to left center. That drove home a run. And then Abby Gentry uh, laced one off the left field walls right here. Speaking into existence, well, maybe not. RBI single, and it's 3-2. So we are through four innings of play. Top of the fifth. Bryant coming up to bat first time. They've had the advantage of coming to the plate with the lead. And they lead three to two, see if they can add on to that advantage. Bernard back in the circle for the Lady Panthers. With two teams that have played two close games, it's no surprise that this is a 3-2 game. Bryant with five hits, Cabot with six. Very evenly matched through the first four innings. Allie White fouls that one away. She started the game pitching now she's been over at first she singled back in the first grounded the third in the third one for two on the day took something off of there that's well off the plate hmm. called a strike that's what I get for guessing look away for a second didn't pay attention for what it's worth I agree with you I <laughs> thought that ball was off the outside corner good frame job though by Titus so 0 and 2, Bernard ahead in the counts. White's got to defend and battle back here. Take a look at where this pitch is located. It's an off speed off the outside of the plate. That's a ball. I'm really sorry, but that, that's a ball. That's over the white 
of the left-hand batter's box. I understand why Allie White is frustrated with that call. Yeah. She wished she got that call as a pitcher. Yeah, right? So 0-2's the count. Doesn't chase that one. Let's see if she can battle back. So White, Stewart, and Lovell do up for Bryant. Two, Crux and three, four, and five. So time is now for the Lady Hornets. They want to tack on to this lead. The reason why Bernard is continuing to try and work that outer part of the plate is because Bryant as a team has really moved up to take away the inside corner. They are almost standing on the white of the inner part of the right-hand batter's box. Look at where White's feet are in relation to where that front line of the box is. What that does is allows them to have extra plate coverage, and any time that Bernard brings the ball on the inside part of the plate, they're able to clear their hips and get quickly to contact, just like that. Also takes really good command if you're gonna come in on the inner half, and mm -hmm. obviously the risk of hitting a batter is always there. I haven't seen a hit batter yet to this point. You're trying to manifest, as the kids say? I'm, I'm trying not to, <laughs> but we know how it works. Five hundred hitter is Allie White, committed to play at Arkansas Tech and the Golden Suns. White continues to stay alive, really good at bat here, making Bernard work. Pitch count now at 82 for Bernard. Five hits, all three runs are earned, seven strikeouts, just one base on ball. White sends one out to right, but nicely positioned there is Complain. She makes the play, first out of the inning is reported. Struck well from right, but Camplain right in the right spot, positioned perfectly. Didn't even have to move out of her spot in right field. A ball in the outer part of the plate. White lets it get deep, hits it off of that back hip, and drives it out into right field. And just Adam ball, but that hit was an example of why you want to let that ball travel. There's a good look at the architect of this Bryant softball squad. Safe here in this championship game. The first title in more than a decade. You have to imagine if this is where Bryant has come in just two years under the new regime, what is coming in the future for the Hornets. This could be the start of one of the great rivalries between Cabot, between Bentonville. We could see a lot of quality 6A softball in the coming years. That one catches the end. I thought it might cut the inside corner. Called a ball though to Stewart. She's 0 for 2, flown out to right, and grounded out to short. Discussion about what the count is. I also thought he called it the our home plate umpire called it a strike. Call, I thought, I thought it was he called a strike, but he didn't make the physical motion. No, I didn't see a I didn't see a, a motion from BJ Robinson okay. behind the plate, I but it is 0-2. Yeah, I thought it was a strike, so you know, I'm gonna You're one for that, one. Yeah, I'm <laughs> one and one. I'll take it. Hey, that's five hundred. That's almost as good as the averages that that's we're true. seeing at the plate. Yeah. Uh, if I improve my, my game a little bit, I can get to <laughs> Abby Gentry level. She's hitting 600, and I think she's raised her average already after today. So one and two is the account to Stewart. That one sent left side off a glove and finds a way in the left field. Just right past the outreach hand of Hawk. And he finds his way for the seeing eye single. And now Bryant has something brewing with one out. Stewart showing off her strength because this ball is on the outer part of the plate. She's actually in front of it, but just pulls it through the 5-6 hole, gets enough muscle on it to give it enough speed, sneaks it right through the 5-6 hole. That is the most difficult spot to defend because as a third baseman, you're trying to move across, your shortstop's moving behind, so it takes a really well-hit ball to get through that portion of the infield. Gets ahead in the count on Lovell. She's one for two, singled back in the second. Came around to score, struck out in the third. Four thirty-five average on the season for Chloe Lovell. 
That one lifted. Gets to the outfield grass. A little confusion. That one drops. Duncan could not make the play. And now some something really brewing here for Bryant. His runners in first and second now after the air. Bryant with a chance to give themselves some cushion. Miscommunication. This should be Autry's ball. It's a routine pop-up. That Bermuda's triangle is a difficult part of the field, but as a center fielder, that is always your ball because you are coming into the play. You can see the entire field in front of you. It's easier for you to adjust as that ball is moving, so Autry should have called off Duncan moving forward. It's easier said from here than it is on the field, I know, but as an outfielder, you always have the call over an infielder who's moving backwards. So Callie Nichols comes up, runners on first and second, one out here in the fifth. Bryant looking to add to their 3-2 lead. One swing, that one lifted out to left. Um, this one is going to be caught by Autry, the center fielder ranging over to the gap. That's a big out there for the Cabot defense as they're two down. Big response by the Cabot defense because after giving up the air that allows a run where you're in that precarious situation in a tight game late, it is so crucial as a defense that you respond and get the next out. Autry taking command out in center field. I really like how she called off Potter put herself in control of that situation. So Hicks now comes up first and second. She's reached base in both of her plate appearances, including a single in the fourth. Fouls that one off. This just feels like a big inning. Bryant can find a way to push one across. It really puts some pressure on the favorite Cabot. 97 pitches now for Kayla Bernard. No pitch count in softball, so she can throw until she wants to go home, I guess. <laughs> or we tell her she has to leave because the game's over. Going up and out of the zone. All you have to do is look at the pitch count of Shanice Dels. Yeah. Very easily getting up to around 300 pitches during an SEC weekend. The outstanding pitcher for Arkansas, who's hosting a regional this weekend. I would expect we'd see that many from Dels coming up yeah. against Oregon and Notre Dame. Swing and a miss. Of course, this host school. They try to pick off the runner at first. The University of Central Arkansas in the NCAA tournament again. I there. think they can get out of the Tuscaloosa region. I really do. They're the two seed at Alabama, who is the number five overall national seed, but. Debatable. In, in, yes, also <laughs> one debatable, but two injuries to their pitching staff. That one catches the outside corner. Bernard gets the strikeout, ends the inning, and. Closes a huge threat for Bryant, so they leave two more due to Lady Hornets. But they lead it three to two, heading to the bottom of the fifth. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service. Because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind. Centennial Bank, member FDIC. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Special thank you to the University of Central Arkansas for their help setting up and hosting the event and the broadcast. UCA Athletics home to 19 NCAA Division I sports and over 450 student athletes who succeed both on the fields and courts as well in the classroom. Visit UCASports.com to learn more. I always have a little more pride reading that one <laughs> as, a, as a former Purple Bear myself. Were they called the Purple Bears back when you went here? No. No, okay, they're okay. They're still the Bears and they're purple, so we're the Purple Bears. Okay, that's fair. I yeah. just, I didn't know if it was a, a thing that got changed. You know, I'm not yeah. from here. It's, right, it's, yeah, 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 I'm with you. No, they're just the Bears. Okay. They have to be purple. I thought it was some information that someone forgot to give me. No, no. But then again, uh, I did play here a long, long time ago. <laughs> So bottom five, Bryant has a three to two lead. 
Miller gets ahead 0-1. Titus, Bernard, and Whitman, 2-3-4 and four in the lineup for the Lady Panthers. So that's, the time is right for Cavett. They want to get back into this one. That one lifted right side. Going to get out to the right field. Made, catch is made there by Hicks. Of course, the first out of the inning. Big first out for Miller coming in still with that one run lead. Outs are getting short for Cabot. Out of part of the plate. Titus just a little bit out in front of it. Cabot so far has not been able to adjust to the speed difference for Miller outside of the solo home run from Akela Bernard. Speaking of, Akela Bernard steps into the box right now. She flew to left in a first inning and solo home run over the left field wall back in the third. 15 home runs, 43 RBIs on the season. Just, as a hitter, that one up around the letters just coming out just got to be so hard <laughs> to lay off because I mean it's just right there, but really nice patience there by Bernard. Taken all the way there. And Miller being very careful with Bernard, but to your point, those balls at the top of the zone, the reason why hitters love to go after them so much is because since they're already up in the zone, you don't have to work to elevate them to get them out of the park. You see that conversation a lot in baseball where they talk about hitting the back of the ball to create that backspin that really causes those balls to fly out of the park. Taken again there. Bernard takes one right down the middle. Now the count's full. Launch angle. That's pretty mm -hmm. much all you hear the more high level baseball softball. Full count pitch. Can't get it done. And Bernard draws a walk. So one out free pass. Brings a Whitman. Singled to center back in the third. If you want to learn more about launch angle, there's a really good video out right now of former Colorado Rocky Dante Bichette talking through launch angle and where the hit positioning is. If you want to go into depth, yeah. if you're interested in that. That one smoked right side. Smothered, though, out there by Easterwood. The throw gets away from the first baseman. Runners are going to advance. Now second and third with one out. A really nice diving stop there by Easterwood, but the throw was off the mark. It allows both runners to advance. Easterwood puts a good swing on this ball, pulls it hard to the right side of the field. Rather, um, Whitman over to Easterwood, who does a great job to smother that ball, keep it on the infield, just rush the throw a little bit. Got to believe that's going to be an infield single and then an error allow the runners to advance. You can't assume the out, even though the th if a good throw would have gotten her. But now Cabot. Has something stirring here in the bottom of the fifth. As an infielder, it's so difficult after you've gone full extension to stop a ball, to collect yourself, to get back up. The thing you have to remember as an infielder is you have more time than you think because you can throw the ball faster than anyone can run down to first yep. base. But a great effort there just to keep that ball on the infield. That is a single and then an error. So second and third now for Cabot. One out here in the fifth. And Gracie Hawk going to step to the plate. Singled and scored in the second. Popped out to short. Her last time up. Trying to add to her 15 RBIs on the season. She sits back on that one. Cleared to the right side off the netting. Nice play either way, but it doesn't count. <laughs> they don't let you catch it off the fence. Got to try to sell it, though. Right. Never hurts to try. White giving chase uh, off the top of the fence. I like the reaction, though. Yeah. Miller's 0-1. Sits back. That one right back up the middle over at second base bag. That's going to bring a run home to score. And we'll call it good there. So that ties the game at three piece. Big RBI. Nice piece of hitting by Hawk. Hawk timed it up perfectly, kept the weight back. Hawk is the first Cabot batter that has really been able to adjust the speed differential of Miller outside of the home run from Bernard. You see Bernard giving information to Scales as she's coming back into the dugout. But look at where Hawk puts this ball going right up the middle, timed perfectly. Easy for Bernard to get into third and. This one lifted right side. So that error also looms large because not did, not only did it allow Bernard to score, but Whitman able to advance to third on the ball out into the infield, out, out into center field rather. 
So here's Emma Scales. She's a one for two on the day. That one fouled off her foot and she's quickly in an 0-2 hole. Scales, 389 on the season. Pair of home runs, 15 RBIs. Big spot here, we are all tied at three. Runners on the corners. Misses out of the zone. You know, runners left on base is always really the, the game within the game. Well, you can read a box score and you see that number. You can uh, you generally tell who won and lost the contest. Cabot's already left five. Bryant's left seven. That one lace left side. That finds a hole. Cabot's back out in front. RBI single by Emma Scales. First to second goes Hawk, and the Cabot offense is clicking here in the fifth. Hitting is contagious, and right now Cabot is feeling it inside the box. Scales with the information that she got from Bernard. Again, keeping the weight back. Ball in the outer part of the plate. Scales gets around it, pulls it right through the 5-6 hole. There was a huge gap in the defense. Easy RBI single. Cabot rolling right now. So now back to the original pitcher for Bryant. Allie White back in the circle. With Cabot adjusting to the, the off speed there of Emily Miller, this is probably a good change and an expected change. It's a needed change as well for Brian, and this feels like it was the game plan all along. Try to work White if Cabot hit her hard, work in Miller for the change, and then bring back in White when they needed her to close. But right now, White coming back into the circle, Cabot going to have to readjust to the speed differential and the spin that White brings inside the circle. There's three pitchers, three pitchers, excuse me, with statistics that were significant for Bryant coming into this. Allie White, 104 strikeouts this year in 101 innings. Miller, the 10 strikeouts, but Cadence Armstrong, 58 strike, 58 strikeouts this year on 33 innings of work. So those are the three pitchers that Bryant's used for the majority of the season. We'll see if White can settle things down. Don't forget to check out YouTube.com slash Arkansas PBS next week. You can relive all the action catch Dorian's expert analysis over and over again youtube.com slash Arkansas PBS I don't even want to listen to myself that much you don't have to <laughs> they can do it I like to go back and break down the film see how bad I was and see how bad I missed that <laughs> strike call so white back in the circle and the first pitch fouled away by Jara Potter she's one for one an RBI single and a sacrifice her line score today So you get better as a broadcaster, Dorian. Break down the film. That one might have got her on the back arm. Let's say it was a foul ball, though. Got her off the hand. Hands are part of the bat, so as much as that hurts, she's going to have to stay in the box. If this was, you know, 10 years ago, they'd say rub some dirt on it. There's yep. no dirt out there. Just can't yeah. do that. Ooh. Right off of that back wrist as it's coming through the strikes, and that's a really tough place to get hit. There's not a lot of protection on that portion of your wrist. So Potter now down 0-2 in the count. and you know, Reestablish some feeling in her fingers and step back in the box and try to have a productive at bat. That one out of the zone, try to get her to chase. right side a nice basket catch there maybe not how you fundamentally draw it up but <laughs> hey it looks good on TV pop out the second and a big second out there for the Bryant defense Easterwood had to travel a lot more distance than she initially anticipated that ball just kept carrying over towards the line good adjustment and ability to get to that and secure the catch so two out now for Duncan. That one catches the inside corner. Duncan's reached on both of her plate appearances. Swings over the top of that one, though. Now she's quickly in a hole 0 2. 
Really nice sequencing here from White, first going on the inner upper portion of the zone to Duncan and then working low and away with the changeup. And Cope telling everyone just to settle down. Duncan stays alive. She battles that one off. Four threes are score. Bryant, excuse me, Cabot's already pushed across a pair of runs this frame. Duncan now lifts one to left. That one could be trouble. It's down. That's going to score a run. A great piece of hitting there for Duncan, and Cabot adds to their lead. Melissa Duncan came into this contest, I mentioned it once already, hitting below 200. So that is a huge, huge RBI single right behind the third base bag. Sometimes in big games, it's the players that you least expect, and Duncan stepping up big. On the outer part of the plate, Duncan a little bit out in front, but does just enough to drop the tweener in out of the reach of Nichols with two outs. Cabot running on contact and Hawk easily in from second base. Yeah, really good effort there from Nichols, the shortstop, trying to get over and make the play. Just could not get there in time. So now Ali Autry steps in, trying to continue this already big inning. The eighth batter of the frame to step into the box. That one fouled straight back, got a little bit in on her hands. Right, really trying to work the inner part of the plate here to the bottom of the Cabot order, trying to get a pop-up, an easy ground out so that Bryant can get out of the bottom of the fifth and get back into the box, try and score some runs. Autry sends one to right field. Hung up just long enough. Hicks camped underneath it to the final out of the inning, but the damage has already been done. A big inning for Cabot. They push across three and they regain the lead. 5-3, Lady Panthers out in front. We head to the sixth as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Hi, I'm Eric Gorgeous from A Craftsman's Legacy. Yeah, let's make it happen, man. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. All right. Yeah, let's rock and roll. I like flames. I cannot stress enough how hot it is. <laughs> That's beautiful. Show your love for Create and its commercial-free programming by becoming a member of your local public television station. Simply call the number below or visit createtv.com to make a donation. It's viewers like you that make Create possible. Thank you. For every moment, for every memory, from that first car, to your first home, to your first child, and all the highs and lows that tomorrow might bring. For everything that matters most to you and your family, there's someone right around the corner dedicated to helping you protect what you love. Your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Special thank you to Conway Corp for their help setting up the event and broadcast. Conway Corp was formed in 1929 to support education in Conway. And more than 90 years later, serving the community and its educational needs remains a core value. Learn more about the nationally recognized utilities provided for the community at ConwayCorp.com. So Bryant steps back into the box, trailing 5-3 here in the sixth. First pitch swinging that was fouled off. It is three, four, and five in the lineup. Correction, it's eight, nine, one. Macy Hoskins steps into the, the box. Reached on the fielder's choice and is flat out to center. There's Bernard now, over 100 pitches for Cabot. Trying to close it out though. She's been the workhorse all season long. If you're Brian, the most important thing as you get into this game, just six outs left, is to be patient inside the box. You need base runners if you are the Hornets. That one again fouled away. One thing to pay attention to, Addison Cooper for Cabot does have three saves this season. So don't, don't automatically assume that Bernard's going to be out there until we're done. 
She's six and oh, three saves, so I do have another option. That one sent left side right to the third base with nice strong throw from Hawk, and the first out's recorded here in the sixth. Hoskins got a good piece of it, just pulled it over to third base. Hawk doing what she's supposed to do in this situation. If you were in Cabot, you're in the driver's seat. Sharp ball, kept her body in front of it. Strong throw over to first. The most important thing here for the Lady Panthers as they try to close this out is to play clean defense. Humble Villain steps in. RBI double in the fourth. One for two on the day. That one up out of the zone from Bernard. Be sure to stick around tonight. First pitch scheduled for 707. Bradley and Taylor in the 1A softball championships. We're just getting loosened up here in Conway and Ferris Field. Fouled straight back by the villain. Bernard is grinding through this one. She hasn't had the best stuff. Bryant's been able to put together some good swings, but obviously she's done more than enough to put her team in a chance to get a win. And that changeup <laughs> is pulled the string on it, and Bovillan had no chance. It's a dirty changeup and a gutsy move to throw it 2 1 count when you're up by two runs in the top of the sixth inning to your rival, but it just falls off the table. That's the effectiveness of the changeup that Bernard has. And that time she comes back and paints the corner. That's just not fair. <laughs> changeup and a fastball on the black. And that gets the strike out there, and Bernard really feeling it. Here's another goes look to, at it. Yeah, it goes to sequencing. It's a backdoor curve, so it starts off on the outer half of the plate and comes back across the middle to cross Pavilion up. Two down here in the top of the sixth. Haven't been many one, two, three innings, just one so far. And it's this Bryant lineup. That one, top of the zone, called a strike. Nine punch outs now for Bernard. That gives her a clean 183 on the season. And misses outside. One run in the second, two in the fourth for Bryant. That's the damage for the Laney Hornets. Three runs on six hits, but they left the bases loaded back in the second. They've left seven stranded here today. That one skied on the infield on the left side. Who's going to make the play? Made by the shortstop, Duncan. And a quick one, two, three inning is exactly what Cabot wanted, and that's what they got. We're through five and a half. Cabot. Inching toward a state title. They're three outs away. They're going to try to add to that 5-3 to three lead as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. Can you see her greatness? When you attend her games, when you cheer her on, or when you participate in any way, you support your community and make it better. And you will see her greatness. Join us as we pledge to increase the visibility of women's sports in our communities. It makes a difference when we all are involved. At Everett Butte GMC, we proudly support our local female athletes and encourage you to do the same. See her greatness. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. Set nothing, leave nobody, check everything. Everyone wants this to be textbook, but it's not. Who's actually in charge here? We got the wrong man. No need to get your knickers in a twist. I'm only trying to help. Murder. Take my advice. When were you going to tell me? These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. Let me take you for a ride on the baseline. Let's go! If you'd like to purchase a copy of this game or any other state championship game from the last few years, just go to mmproductions.net. Place your order. You can watch it over and over again. Want to relive that Taylor baseball or Harbor baseball championship from earlier today? Place your order. You can do it. 
5-3 lead, Cabot. The bottom of the six, looking to add on to it. Maybe an insurance run or two can never be enough. Most important thing here for Brian in the bottom half of the sixth inning is they're down to their final three outs of the season. Need a good, strong defensive inning. Cabot in control of this game. Lady Panthers willing to work the count. They're going to look to take free passes, really try to pad that lead as they can feel it. But Brian, they need a quick, clean inning. White's deliver on the 1-0, lifted to the left side. That's going to get down for a base hit. So a leadoff single here in the bottom of the sixth as Cabot in business. Cabot continuing to force the issue. A good piece of leadoff hitting, not trying to do too much, just dropping a shallow single into left field. Yeah, nothing like coming off the bench as a pinch mm -hmm. hitter. Lauren Riley just lifts one in the left field. Gets herself a hit. Now Camplain comes back in to run. So Riley gets the base hit, and then she's quickly replaced by the, who she was hitting for, Camplain. So if you're keeping score at home, <laughs> hope you got all that. A pinch hitting can be one of the most difficult things in softball because a lot of times you spent so much time on the bench, you don't yep. necessarily have a lot of warning that you're going to go in and get some swings, and you're expected to deliver on the spot. These two teams rolled into the park at about 2.30. She's been sitting on the bench since then. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about three and a half hours to sit around and wait. And she took advantage of the opportunity that she got, though. That brings up Titus, the catcher. So we are now past the 6 o'clock hour. A bunt put down by Titus goes foul, just trying to move that runner over. Can never have enough insurance. Whether you're talking about life, car, or runs. <laughs> it's a good idea by Titus. Just got her feet moving a little bit early. A lot of times in a sacrifice situation, especially late in the game, in a close game, you start to try and move out of the box because you also want to try and be safe. Sacrifice situation, your job is just to turn and square early. Titus does get the, the butt down there, and it can't, the play can't be made at third. And both runners are going to be safe on the air. Well executed by Titus. She put the ball in the portion of the field where it needed to go, pushing it to the left side of the field. Stewart being really aggressive in the way that she was coming after that ball, which is exactly what you need to do as a third baseman. But unfortunately for Stewart, just at the last second, she picks her head up trying to see where Titus is down the line. And so she comes up just a little bit short on that ball. You mentioned they needed a clean inning. They didn't get it. And mm -hmm. it always happens. An error now, multiple runners on base. And well, guess who's stepping up? A Kayla Bernard who leads the team with a 5-14 batting average and 15 home runs, including one already here today. It's why playing that clean defense is so important because they just innings have a tendency to snowball after you make errors. And this game is tight. Bryant's not out of it as they will go to yet another pitcher. But they're leaving the door open here for Cabot to try and really pad this lead. Now this is Cadence Armstrong who's going to take over pitching wise for the Lady Hornets. 33 innings of Warwick, 58 strikeouts. So a high volume strikeout pitcher. Uh, 297 ERAs, giving up 17 runs, 14 hits in those 33 innings of work, 15 walks, so not a lot of contact. So let's take a quick break, and we'll take a look at the, the rest of this inning and see if Bryant can shut the door and get a chance to rally as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. What's the best thing about a passport? Freedom. You know you can grab it and go someplace inspiring, someplace romantic, someplace unexpected. When you support your PBS station, you can enjoy PBS Passport. First pitch swinging there from Bernard, who sends that one foul down the left field line. You're just joining us now, Cadence Armstrong in the circle for Bryant. And trying to stop the bleeding here in the sixth and keep things within striking distance for the Lady Hornets. Bernard looking to pounce, hunting on the first pitch. She knows the importance of having that runner on second base. 
Bernard swings at that one as Tomahawks it out in the left. A diving catch is made. What a play out there by Chloe Lovell. Fantastic defensive play by Lovell. She got a little bit crossed up with her feet because the line drive really carried off of the bat of Bernard. But the excellent adjustment and Bryant going back to second. It looks like they're trying to double up the runner because that play happened so fast. Look at how quickly this ball gets out to left field. It is on a line to Lovell. Per read it perfectly. Just gets the leather underneath. And the third base umpire right on top of it to call that and out. That is one of the best defensive plays that you're going to see. A great diving catch there by Lovell. Now it keeps Bryant within the two run deficit. But they're not out of the inning yet. Emily Whitman steps in. Bernard has just hit ropes the last couple times. Obviously the solo home run walked the last time, but a couple really good swings in her last plate appearance, and that time she just got robbed. And really obvious why Bernard's hitting in the three spot. Whitman couldn't commit fully to that swing. It's one of those moments that a hit, as a hitter, we were like, oh, I don't really want to swing, but I've already started, <laughs> and now I don't want to stop. And yeah. uh, okay, we'll just li we'll live to fight another yeah. pitch. The 0-1 to Whitman gets her to chase one up and out of the zone. Now she's quickly down 0-2. Armstrong coming in in a big situation. Velocity is upper 50, so a little bit slower than White, but Armstrong really likes to feature that rise ball. You can see she's working up in the zone to the last couple of batters, and so far she's been able to get Whitman swinging underneath. Whitman, five home runs, 17 RBIs on the season. That time she changes her eye level and goes low as the base is stolen there. Kind of a delayed steal, if you will. But gets the job done, does the catcher Titus on the stolen base. Great jump from both from Titus had that tag been applied on the front side of the base Titus likely would have been out and a really strong throw though from Gentry so first and excuse me second and third now it doesn't matter as Armstrong gets the punch out a big second out of the inning you know, really needed out from Bryant there to try and keep this at a two run deficit it's up to Gracie Hawk now. She's had a really good day at the plate. A pair of singles, she scored twice. Mm. Tough pitch there, Hawk gets the benefit of the doubt, so she's heading the count. Cabin third baseman. It's a chase there, so it evens up the count one and one. Armstrong's got a really pretty rise ball. It has a late break action on it, which is why you're seeing Cabot be a little bit underneath it because by the time that the Lady Panthers hitters have committed, it's already out of the zone. That went in on her hands, fouled straight back. Bryant's got plenty of players headed to play at the next level. And you can see a few on the screen there. Armstrong committed to Illinois College. A few going to Arkansas Tech. Emily Miller's going to ASU Mountain Home. We're really seeing a rise in junior colleges in the state of Arkansas. This one's lifted out in the center. Catch is made there, and the inning's over by Hoskins. So three outs away are the Lady Panthers of Cabot from co collecting their first title since 2019. We'll see if they can get it done. As you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month in Passport on the PBS video app. What's the most important ingredient? Yeah, you gotta put the, the love. love in, yeah. Life on an island is all about balance, especially if you're a hula dancer and an avid hunter. These and other shows from Arkansas PBS are available with Passport on the PBS video app. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. 
Local broadcast of Arkansas PBS programming is made possible in part by Community Bakery. Scratch-made breads, pastries, cakes, treats, and locally roasted coffees served daily at two locations in Little Rock, 1200 Main and 270 Shackleford. You never gonna stop. Special thank you to the Conway Chamber of Commerce for helping us organize and set up the event and the broadcast. The Conway Chamber of Commerce serving the Conway area business community since 1891. For more information, just visit conwaychamber.org. Three outs is all that stands between Cabot and a state championship. And standing in their way are the two, three, and four hitters for the uh, Lady Hornets of Bryant. Cadis Armstrong, Allie White, and Peyton Stewart do up. For Bryant, quick look at the line score today. There have been plenty of traffic on the base pass. For Bryant, three runs on six hits, but they have left seven. Five runs, 11 hits, nine left on base for Cabot. Cabot trying to complete the season sweep of Bryant, but more importantly, win the one that happens last. A little chopper to shorts, the quick throw. And one pitch, one out as Armstrong has sat down. Good idea from Armstrong. Good placement to the deepest part of the field, but a nice throw over to first by Duncan Strong to be able to get the first out of the inning. Duncan's had herself a really good day here in the 6A state championship. Now Allie White going to step in. One out, down a pair of runs here in the seventh. Takes a lot off of that one, catches the outside corner. And Bernard gets ahead in the count. I like the idea of the first pitch changeup, especially going up against an aggressive hitter like White. Bernard using that aggressiveness against White in that situation. 113 pitches now for Bernard. That one fouled away. She's given up six runs, all, or excuse, excuse, excuse me, six hits. All three runs are earned. Nine strikeouts, walked only one. Cabot's trust in their, their workhorse to finish this off. White chased that one out of the zone, protecting the plate. White getting a little anxious. In this situation as a hitter, it's very easy to expand the zone. You're counting outs mentally. You're down 0-2 in the count. You want to be able to keep this inning alive, but you have to make sure that that ball is in the zone before you decide to go after it. One for three is White. Able to stay back on that breaking ball and finds a hole and gets past the outreach glove of Duncan. A good adjustment pitch to pitch from White. She was undisciplined, went after the ball that was off, way off the outside corner, able to foul it away. It's another off speed. This time White keeps the weight back, able to drive it up the middle of the field, timed it well. And the most important thing here for Bryant is it gives them life. They've got a base runner now with the tying run at the plate. So tying run is at the plate. The white singles. Peyton Stewart is up next. She is one for three on the day. Stewart 317 average on the season. Some substitutions coming for Bryant. Peyton Stewart, the scheduled next hitter, is at the plate. Hey, you want some action shots from today's contest? Just go to myarpbs.org slash photos. Appreciate the crew battling the heat today. Get some great action shots for everybody to enjoy. There you can catch all the action shots for football, volleyball, both the basketball contest. So I've got a runner at first now. Looks like Price is going to come in and run now for the Lady Hornets. Her run's not meaningless, but of course the tying run is at the plate. You can't run yourself into any extra outs here. 
And Bryant looking to force the issue on a ball into the gap. That's why you're seeing the pinch running substitution pick up a little bit of extra speed at the very least on a ball into the outfield. Bryant is trying to advance the runner to third. That one called a strike. So Jacqueline Price is the pinch runner. It's a good look at Jacqueline there. One out, top seven. That one lines. It's the left side again. It finds a hole. So first and second now. And you knew they weren't going to go quietly, but the Bryant Lady Hornets have something stirring here in the top of the last. Bryant, we talked about hitting was contagious with Cabot, and the same thing with the Hornets. Ball in the center of the plate from Bernard. Stewart just barrels it up. It's a good piece of hitting. She keeps her hands back. That allows that bat whip to come through and really drive the ball through the infield. Chloe Lovell now going to step up to the plate in her lofty 435 average. <laughs> just one home run, but 19 RBIs. The important thing for Lovell and Bryant to remember is you don't need to do it with one swing. A lot of times hitters try to want to finish the game with one swing, but you don't need that. Right now, if you're Bryant, you just need singles. Keep going station to station. Get a good ball that you can hit. Just drop it into the outfield. Bernard comes right across the middle, and Lovell comes through. That one right back to center. One run's going to come around the score. The throw gets all the way to the backstop. And that allows the runners to get up in second and third. Great piece of hitting from Lovell and Bryant is right back in this one. Same formula for Bryant with every hitter that's gotten on base in this inning. It's been a good pitch that they have taken a good swing at. Very patient approach, attacking good pitches early in the counts. And the throw being offline allows Bryant to be more aggressive in their base running and move both Stewart and Lovell into scoring position. We talked about earlier in this broadcast, Dorian, did we, about how deep this lineup is for Bryant. And now we're starting to see it. As now as Callie Nichols lays down a bunt. And tries a cheap one home, and she's tagged out at the plate. I thought she might have actually been out of the box when she made contact with that. But they try to the old suicide squeeze, and the cabinet defense right there and makes the play. Bryant would have rather she been out of the box when she made contact because it would be a foul ball. You get to go back. However, the squeeze a little bit pushed too forward. Stewart was off and running on contact. Stewart as a runner, though, even though the squeeze is on, you have to recognize that that ball is too hard to the pitcher hold up. It's a good idea from Bryant trying to sneak one through. Cabot just right on top of it. Uh, great job of Bernard of defending her position mm -hmm. as that first pitch Mitch is inside. You know, a lot of times coming off, especially when you throw it underhand, you got to come in and throw right. it overhand. That's a tough adjustment you'll, for anybody to make. You'll see pitchers a lot of times throw that ball right into the dirt, or in this case, the turf, because they're so used to throwing underhand. So first and third now, two out. Five to four contest. Leah Hicks, she's reached base a couple times today. Can't catch up with a high fastball there. Yeah, so it is five to four. Hicks down 0-2. That one up and out of the zone, though. Bernard trying to close this one out for Cabot. She's been on the circle for the duration. 121 pitches now. That one called strike on the outer third. Tying runs at third, go ahead runs at first. But now Bryant is down to their final strike. Hicks taking an extra moment to collect herself, getting into the box. Right now, the only thing that matters for Hicks is she has to go into battle mode here. Yeah. If it's close, you've got to be swinging. Season is on the line. That one sent right side, gets through. This ball game is tied. Bryant trying to advance, and they do. A great base running there by Nichols and a great piece of hitting from Leah Hicks and it ties this contest. What a huge moment for Leah Hicks falling behind in the count having to work 2-2 count Bernard giving her one of Bernard's best pitches quite frankly on the outer part of the plate Hicks just a little bit behind it but she's able to barrel it up because she lets that barrel get through the zone long. 
what a timely hit. There may be no more timely hit in Hicks's career than being able to tie the game in the top of the seventh of your season on the line. Yeah, really dangerous base running there by Nichols, but she gets there, beats the throw, so first and third, and now the go-ahead run is at third base for the Lady Hornets. Could this game end any other way? No, <laughs> we knew this was going to be a slugfest going both directions. Both teams five runs. Both teams have double digits now in hits. Macy Hoskins fouls that one back. She is 0 for 3 on the contest. Reached on the fielder's choice, flat out to center, and then grounded out to third. Cabot hasn't lost to a team in Class 6A all season long. That one lifted, but foul. Healthy cut, though, from Hoskins. Not intimidated by Bernard, not letting the moment get too big. She was ready and locked in to hit. So Bernard's ahead 1-2. It's the 35th batter that Bernard has faced. And you can see the, the innings pitch, the strikeouts. She has been busy today. You gotta really have to give a tip of the cap to this Bryant lineup, just making her work. And we, we talked about at the beginning of the, the broadcast, the first and second inning, she threw 50 pitches between those two frames. And they, they've made her earn everything out there, having been really any cheap outs, any quick innings. No, she threw 23 pitches in the fourth, 19 in the fifth. That one chopped foul on the left side. We'll have to do it again. And credit Bryant for battling in the box, being down 5-3, going into the final three outs of your season. It is really easy to fold mm -hmm. and just go 1-2-3 in order, but Bryant has shown a lot of grit here in the top of the seventh inning. Yeah, it's easy to forget. First pitch swing and ground out to the start right. of this frame. We're all tied up. Runners at the corners. Hoskins at the plate. She steps out, collect her thoughts. And I like the decision to call for time. This is a very pressure-filled moment. Doesn't hurt you anything to step out as long as the home plate umpire gives you time. Bernard's 2-2 up and out of the zone. So that's going to allow the runner at first to be put into motion. So maybe one in the gap could push two runs across for Bryant. Hicks is your runner at first. Nichols is your runner at third. Big moment for both Brian and Cabot. That's a little bit of an understatement, but runner at first will go on a full count. Runner at third will hold to see if the ball's in play. And if I'm Hoskins here, I'm looking for something good to hit because she knows that Bernard does not want to walk the bases full in this situation. Well, villain would be next. That one lifted the left. That one's high. It's deep. Gone! Three-run shot, and Bryant has blown this game open here in the seventh. What a good swing that Hoskins put on it. Six home runs on the season. As soon as that one made contact, we knew it was landing behind the fence. Hoskins got a ball that was elevated in the zone. It goes back to that ball being up, being easier to drive. Hoskins gets the bottom half of the ball, gets the back swing, the back spin, and that ball just flies out of Ferris Field. Three run homer as Bryant plays five in the inning. Look at the contact point. It is up around the letters where it says Bryant. Nice high follow through. That extension is where that power is coming from. Another no doubter in a huge moment for the Hornets. Yeah, that was definitely a no doubter. And Bryant, who's no stranger to success, their football team has <laughs> built a powerhouse, and their softball team may not be far from it. Five runs here in the seventh inning. Man, what a frame. Buck James would definitely call yeah. this being 2-1-2. Two, two. No doubt about it. So that's going to bring up a villain. Five runs have already come across the plate. Cabot was just two outs away from a state championship, and Uncle Mo has certainly shifted. 
really important for Bernard to try and put that out of her mind. That is easier said than done in this big situation. But Cabot has the ability to score three runs in their own half of the inning. So if you're the Lady Panthers, you have to be able to go ahead and forget that, get the batter inside the box, and then try and battle your way back in your half of your inning. So that one catches enough there. So Bovillan down out 0-2. And you're exactly right, Dorian. And you've got to stop the, the damage here because you're, you're an offense that has scored in bunches all season long. You've scored nine runs against this team already once this year. So you know you can get the job done, but you have to limit it to, to three now. Well, Villain sends that one out towards second. Now to Shorts, Duncan there. Underneath it, and she makes the play. But five runs come across, and the big one, Macy Hoskins, a three-run no-doubter into the left field seats, has given the Lady Hornets of Bryant an eight to five lead. Three outs away from a title. We'll find out if they can get it done as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. It's prime time on your time. Get more of your primetime favorites each weekday starting at 1.30 following our PBS Kids programs. Catch up on all the programs you love, including Exploring Arkansas, Nature, Antiques Roadshow, Arkansas Week, British Favorites, Mysteries, and more beginning at 1.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. See the full schedule and all the ways to watch at myarkansaspbs.org slash watch. Kat Robinson and I preach the gospel of Arkansas food. No, really? No, it is not. Um, For more than a decade, I've been traveling the state. Good morning. Searching out our culinary this roots and every yeah. great little restaurant and food story I can find. Help you make room for pie. Thank you. Download the PBS video app or watch online. One, two, three, hurry up! Get to know the South's most compelling and influential authors, musicians, and more in Southern Storytellers. It starts July 18th, only on Arkansas PBS. We were talking during the break, and Dorian and I were, just did not necessarily see that one coming. And the Bryant offense came to life when the season was on the line in impressive fashion. This quality at bats, make, making Bernard work the pitcher for Cabot, and then one swing of the bat, this thing certainly changed. Five runs in the top of the seventh inning for Bryant is why you play until your final out. You never know what's going to happen, how the game is going to unfold. So credit the Hornets with fighting until the end. Now Cabot needs to do the exact same thing here in the bottom of the seventh. So it's going to be Scales, Potter, and Duncan for Cabot. You can hear the Bryant crowd is now locked <laughs> into every pitch. This game has been back and forth for most of the, with the late innings really seem like Bryant was battling uphill against this Cabot squad. And that one's going to be a hit by a pitch. So Scales is going to get first. And that's the last thing you want to do if you're the Lady Hornets is hand out free passes. Exactly, especially with leadoff batters. You never want to issue free passes in any way. Screwball just gets away from Armstrong. It catches the hands. I'm a little surprised they didn't keep scales inside the box because it was off the hands. Didn't really move out of the way, but home plate umpire says it's a hit by pitch, so scales will be down at first. And if you're Bryant, you have to be able to stop the run before it starts because this is the best case scenario for Cab. It doesn't matter how you get on for the Lady Panthers. You just need base runners. So Peyton Nicholson's going to run four scales. Nicholson's been in at second base. She's the designated player, but she's going to run for scales. Who's the designated hitter. And now Jarrah Potter going to step in. She's got a couple base hits today. The conversation at this point in the game is just saying Forget about the runner at first, focus on the batter inside the box because with a three run cushion, the runner at first does not matter. Now we talked about that in the top of the seventh as <laughs> yeah. well in terms of the run differential and the batters versus the runners and in, in making a difference. But for Bryant, you gotta put that out of your mind. Just focus on getting outs. Yep, you'll trade and that runner advancing mm -hmm. for an out. Right. No doubt about it. You'd even give up that one run for an out at this point. 
And Armstrong in the face with Potter. Misses outside. So Armstrong's now thrown one full inning of work. She's faced four batters, struck out one. Potter sends one high and deep to left. Does it have enough to carry? A great job out there in left field by Chloe Lovell to track that one down in foul territory and a very loud out, number one. Level has come up with two big defensive plays in each of the last two half innings. Tracks this ball all the way as it is tailing towards the foul line. Makes sure she has enough room, checks where she is against the fence, gets behind the ball, secures the out. And you think back to the diving play that she made to rob Bernard of what likely would have been an RBI hit. That's looming large here with it being now a three-run game. No question. So Alyssa Duncan. Now at the plate, she's two for three with an RBI. That one fouled straight back. And she's quickly in an 0-2 hole. Armstrong going right after Duncan inside the box. Situationally, that's what you need to do. Go after the hitters, be aggressive about attacking the zone. That one lifted left side. Looks like it's gonna get out of play, so Duncan Lives to see another pitch. It's so hard to calm the nerves in this situation. You get really amped up. This game has had some really big swings in terms of momentum, and so to be able to really re-steady yourself and reset and be patient inside the box, it's a really good at bat here from Duncan. She calls time to collect her thoughts. Facing an 0-2 hole, runners on first, but down by three are the Lady Panthers. Softballs to come in. Kind of prolong things. We may, we're getting close to the point where they have to push back the start of the 1A softball championship, but we'll worry about that one when this one's done. Armstrong. That's Duncan to chase that one. Skies it high to the shortstop, and the catch is made by Nichols, and two are away. Bryant can feel it now. They are getting close but the last out is always the most difficult. You're climbing to the top of the mountain. That last 10 feet, always the toughest. Ball up in the zone, Duncan just a little bit underneath it. Easy pop out for Nichols. Bryant, one out away from a state title. Yep, Ali Autry steps in, and this is a big batter as well, because if you don't record an out here, the top of the lineup looms large coming up next. Strong's first pitch up and out of the zone. You can just kind of feel the tension. That's the best part about <laughs> being involved in these state championships. The emotion is riding on every pitch. That one fouled away, it evens up the count at one apiece. The best part about being on this side of it is not as tension field <laughs> yeah. as being on that side of it. No question about it. 8 5, Bryant looking for their first title since 2012. That one fouled away. Now one strike away. Cabot and Autry just have to find a way to prolong the inning. Gets her signal, she sets and delivers. Strike three. Bryant, who trailed going to the top of the seventh, is your 6A state champion. The Lady Hornets rally for five runs in the seventh, and they close the door as they avenge two regular season losses, and they win the one that matters most as they take down Cabot, eight to five. What a big moment for the Bryant Hornets down 
to their last three outs, find a way to rally, never gave up hope, come up with five big runs in the top half of the seventh inning for their first state title in more than a decade. State Championship Trophy presentation, and we'll find out who's your MVP coming up. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Want to see even more Arkansas stories? Subscribe to Arkansas PBS on YouTube for original productions, extras from your favorite local programs, behind the scenes videos, and our exclusive coverage of high school sports. All available on demand and all Arkansas made. Don't miss out on more great Arkansas stories. Subscribe now. Arkansas, what's in your attic? Find out what your heirlooms, antiques, and unique collectibles are worth. Join us for the filming of a brand new show. Arkansas Treasures. Your contribution of $120 admits you and a guest to bring two items to our team of professional appraisers for an evaluation at a special event in the Arkansas PBS studios. And if your item and story are selected for filming, you may end up on our show. Additionally, your contribution gets you a one-year membership to Arkansas PBS, including our monthly member magazine and access to PBS Passport, where you can stream thousands of hours of incredible PBS content. This special this special event happens on August 5th and 6th in Conway. Tickets will go quickly, so guarantee your spot by calling now or visiting our website. Simply scan the QR code with your phone. Your treasure may be worth more than you know. A wild finish in this one as Bryant rallies back and claims the 6A state championship with five runs in the seventh inning as we're trying to digest it. She's Dorian Kraft, I'm Bobby Swafford. And this game was everything we expected it to be. We knew it was going to be a heavyweight battle. These two had a great contest in the regular season and, well, today did not disappoint. <laughs> The state final lived up and surpassed the first two rounds between Cabot and Bryant. Well played game on both sides of the field. Unfortunately, someone has to win. Somebody has to lose. And it all came down to that last opportunity. Bryant pleading five in the top half of the seventh inning. And this is one of the more exciting state championship games I've seen in a long time. That's what the stage is all about. Seeing the best teams play in the biggest moments. And Bryant came through as they've just received their hardware and their banner. And now they get to take the... The picture they've all been waiting for. You grow up hoping to take this picture. And Bryant, for the first time since 2012, gets to take that picture and, more importantly, gets to order some rings in a <laughs> week or two. All about the hardware. But, Bobby, for me, Bryant's run really actually started with that win over Bentonville. That yeah. win gave Bryant a lot of confidence coming into this game. And even when they fell down, it never felt like Bryant thought they were out of the game. The Hornets always seemed like they were able to battle back in the toughest moments. Everybody thought this was going to be a rematch from last year. We're talking about Bentonville and Cabot, but Bryant had other ideas. They knocked off the defending champion, and then they rallied in the seventh for five as they take down Cabot, and they win it eight to five. Let's take a look at some highlights from how we got here today and all the scoring. Well, it's been a long one, two and a half hour contest, but this game really lived up to a Bernard's <laughs> solo home run. And at that point, it really felt like Cabot was going to take over, even though it didn't necessarily give them the commanding lead. It really felt like Cabot had all the momentum. But Bryant just refused to go away. In the fifth inning, this is when Cabot really started to kind of pull away. A couple RBI singles back up the middle. They built a 5-3 to three lead going into the seventh inning, but that's when the big bats for Bryant really started to come to life. And they just kind of chip away, chip away, and then all of a sudden, big blow. And that's why this Bryant Lady Hornet team is holding the trophy. All you need sometimes is a bloop and a blast. Bryant got a handful of bloops, came up with a big blast off of the bat of Macy Hoskins. And that was the game ender. That's the, the big blow, and that's why Bryant's is your 6A state champions, 8-5. to five. Don't go anywhere. Arkansas PBS is just getting warmed up today and this weekend. The 1A state softball championship is coming up in just a little bit. First pitch may be delayed by a few minutes. Scheduled first pitch, 707, but Taylor and Bradley round five. The five-time defending state champion going for number six, talking about Taylor, but their biggest rival stands in the way. That's coming up in just a little bit, so don't go anywhere. She's Dorian Kraft. I'm Bobby Swafford. Appreciate you tuning in. 
sure to stick around for the 1A title game as you've been watching the Centennial Bank State Softball Championship on Arkansas PBS Sports.